Spanish Interpreter. Mi nombre es Brenda López, estoy con la agencia AFLS. Uh, si alguien necesita un intérprete en español, aquí estoy presente. Gracias. Okay, thank you. And then, can we have the interpreter in Tucson do the same thing? If we can just wait one second, we'll have Tucson join us and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, excellent. Tucson, can you have the Spanish interpreter there introduce herself or himself? The attorney Jerry Rick Simpson is there. They had to speak with him over here. Yeah, every meeting. Yeah, and this is the same company. Same company. The business. Oh, okay. Okay. Hola, mi nombre es Lisette Murillo y yo soy la intérprete en español. Si alguien requiere de mis servicios, me pueden encontrar en la sala de atrás. Okay, excellent. And then um, right now, if we will, everybody will stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, justice for all. Thank you. And at this time, we'll turn it over to Ch uh, Vice Chair Watchman. Thank you, Lori. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Get it closer. Is this better? There we go. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome. Uh, I am Derek Watchman, the Vice Chair of the Independent Redistricting Commission, and it's so good to be here. Uh, I, I now call this meeting to order of the Arizona Independent Redistricting Commission. Uh, I would like to do some house rules here before we get on, but I would like to ask that you follow the 
Arizona Department of Health guidelines in regards to COVID-19. If you're not fully vaccinated, you should wear a mask in public space if you'd like to participate from home. Each of these meetings uh, will be streamed through WebEx, YouTube, and our other social media channels. We're also recording, and we will post this these proceedings today on our website, which is irc.az.gov. So you can find the information there. We would also like to make a public comment. I'm sorry, if you'd like to make a public comment, you may do so by signing with the staff at, at the front there by filling out a form and we will acknowledge you. We also have an American Sign Language interpreter joining us by, virtually and here sitting beside me. And we have a uh, transcript, uh, transcriptionist who will be uh, transcribing every meeting. Uh, for the record, please speak slowly and clearly so that we have the information and it's recorded. At this time, I would like to introduce ourselves. I will start with Commissioner Meal, who is online there. David? Hello, glad to be with you. I'm uh, David Meal, and I am from Pima County. Thank you, Commissioner Meal. To my far left. Hi there, Erica Newberg, the chairwoman from Chandler, Maricopa County. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Shireen Lerner. I'm one of the representatives from Maricopa County. And as I, as I said earlier, I'm Derek Watchman, the vice chair. I represent Apache County, and I come from Winter Rock, Arizona. So it's very good to be here to see everybody, not only in the audience, but online in Tucson. I want to acknowledge everybody in Tucson. I see everybody's wearing red. And so thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, <laughs> I see you out there. Great, great. Okay, uh, now let's, we will move to uh, agenda item number two, and it will start with a presentation on the process. And so I'd like to turn over to our legal team. Thank Lord you. George. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brett Johnson from the law firm of Snell and Wilmer, and I'm joined by my colleague over here, Daniel um, Ariano uh, from the law firm of Ballard Spar. Um, and we always like to start out the, the meetings with a little bit of a civics presentation. So hopefully you learn maybe some of this um, in grade school, but we'll, we'll see. All right. Oh, there it is. Okay. So the, um, obviously um, the, the need for redistricting goes all the way back to the U.S. Constitution. Um, and basically what the Constitution requires is that every 10 years there's a reapportionment um, of the population for purposes of representation in Congress. So the root of everything is, is in the U.S. Constitution. The Arizona Constitution, um, when we became a state, um, kind of reiterated that for purposes of our legislative district process. Um, and the basics, the basics of it is, is that there's going to be equal population in all of our congressional districts. And for legislative districts, what the courts have said is that you could have a small little deviation for um, legislative districts. That's who we represent to our, our state house. Um, and, the, and the reason being is, is that obviously we are a very large state, even though it kind of looks a little bit different when you're looking at a map. We're a very large state, much larger than a lot of other states. And when you're drawing those types of maps, you have to take into consideration um, a lot of the different factors that were that are actually bound inside our constitution and we'll get to in a second okay so from 1912 through 2000 the arizona legislature is who controlled redistricting um, and that's how it was in the entire united states um, all of the state legislative legislatures controlled redistricting arizona was the first to um, put inside its arizona constitution that taking away that responsibility from the Arizona State Legislature and creating an independent redistricting commission. As part of that process um, in Proposition 106, it was really meant to um, avoid a lot of the, the gerrymandering that occurs in the other states where you basically have um, lines that are drawn all over the map primarily to uh, protect incumbents has been uh, the, uh, the major history, as well as some dark parts of our history for, for what's called racial gerrymandering. Okay. So our commission members, um, basically, as required by the Arizona Constitution, has five members. 
um, no more can uh, can no more than two can be of the same party, and um, no more than two commissioners of the four original members may reside in the same county. So of course this is a, always written by a lawyer to make sure that's a, the context makes sense. So Erica Newberg uh, is our independent. Um, basically was a was chosen by the um, the other four commissioners to be the independent chair. Um, Vice Chair Watchman is the Democrat, and he is from Apache County. Uh, Shireen Lerner, Commissioner Lerner, is the Democrat from Maricopa. And then uh, Commissioner David Meal, the Republican from Pima. And then Commissioner Douglas York is a Republican also from Maricopa County. So obviously beating the criteria. Here is what the commission has to do and some of the conversation that we're hoping to have with you tonight, this afternoon. So our constitution lays out six specific criteria that the commission must consider when it is moving the, or creating the lines. The way that the process starts is, is that a grid map must be created and that has already been done by the commission. And what the grid map must consider is nothing of the previous lines. Remember we talked about earlier about gerrymandering and protection of incumbents from other states. Arizona's constitution goes the other way. You have to ignore the previous lines and you recreate from scratch using equal population in a grid-like manner. And that's what has been done in the commission, I think uh, two weeks ago, adopted that, um, that map done by our mapping consultants, okay? Uh, as to the six different criteria, uh, the first one is obviously compliance with the U.S. Constitution, um, and then secondarily, what's called the Voting Rights Act, which is a, veter uh, a federal um, uh, statutory regimen which basically protects people's rights to votes, and especially um, in minority populations. Okay. Um, next is the congressional districts shall have equal population to the extent practical. And then again, state legislative districts shall have equal uh, population always to, uh, also to the extent practical. We already talked about how there can be a small deviation. Districts must be geographically compact and contiguous to the extent uh, practical. That is meant to ensure that, uh, you know, like some states, maybe back east and, and maybe in the Midwest, uh, where they draw basically a line, a small little district, and it covers most of the of, of the state to protect some sort of interest, et cetera. Um, in this case, they need to be as compact as possible. You cannot have part of a district over here and then a clear divide and then another part of the district in another part of the state. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, district map, map boundaries shall respect communities of interest to the extent practical. Um, we're going to talk about communities of interest in particular in, particular in a minute. Um, the commission did a 15, uh, uh, it was actually more than 15, but 15 in-person visits across the state with satellites up to, I think, 45 more. Um, on top of that, to talk about communities of interest in particular. Um, from there is, is that, the, again, we talked about the geographical features and also uh, being, giving respect to town and county boundaries and undivided census tracts when, when possible. And then finally, and this is what sometimes causes a lot of confusion, and there were several cases when the IRC was first created in 2000, is to the extent practical, competitive districts should be favored, where to do so would create no significant detriment to the other goals. So what that means is, is that if, if, if a competitive district is possible, so long as it does not significantly impact A through E, then the mission of the Arizona Constitution is to try to create creative maps. Again, so long as those are not, the, the other six categories are not impacted. So next slide. Okay, commission meetings are open to the public. Um, they've been going on for several months. These, these meetings are in person. The ones that are on every Tuesday are business meetings and they're, ha um, they're handled virtually. There's a public comment um, section where you're able to comment um, as to what the commissioners are discussing. And we strongly encourage you to take part in, in all of those uh, meetings. Um, the initial input, as I mentioned before, was about communities of interest. Um, a community of interest report was generated by the mapping consultants to discuss what has already been heard. However, that doesn't mean that you cannot um, reassert or, or uh, discuss community interest all the way during this entire process. It's one of the constitutional criteria. Due to some delays with the Census Bureau, um, the commission took that opportunity to do a road tour to talk about communities of interest in particular. Now all of the criteria is being considered. Um, the input on the draft maps, what we're encouraging you to do 
and thank you again for being here tonight and for those of you online and those down in Tucson, is to be part of the process. And not just for you, but for your kids, your grandkids, whoever it might be, your neighbors, is be part of the process. Because this is what is going to impact the state for the next 10 years as to how the lines in your representation is made. So there are multiple ways to participate in the process. Some of the links are already up there. But you have the ability, and we encourage you all to do it, is to submit your own maps. Not just maps statewide, but if you just want, um, uh, and this was a, a big issue from our, our last meeting, if you want to just talk about your individual district as, there, as it is on the grid map and you want to see how the lines are, that's fine too. Be part of the process and, be, and, and submit maps. However it works out, even if it is literally printing out the map and mailing it in or hand, handing it to one of us before we leave, that is what we, what we were encouraging you to do. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I know Mark is probably saying, don't say that, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just make it work out the best you can. But again, encourage the part participation. Again, the process, uh, the way it's going to work out, draft, uh, draft maps, grid map has already been selected. Now the commission is in the process of drawing basically the initial draft map. That draft map will be um, then published for a period of time for both public comment and the legislature gets to comment too. And then after that process is done, then the commission will come back and approve the final maps, okay? During that entire process, you're able to reach out to the commission itself and give your input as to how the process is working and the maps that you um, want to see. Okay. One thing that we encourage, and I'm going to probably steal uh, uh, Vice Chair Watchman's thunder on this, is that when you do propose a map, remember we mentioned the seven different criteria that were, were uh, up before. When you're proposing a map, explain why you've chosen those lines. Is it because of one of the different criteria? Is it because of a community of interest? Is it because you think that that district is going to be more competitive? If you, is it because that's uh, compact and geographic? Um, uh, measurements indicate on, on your map why you're making that decision. That is only going to help inform the policy decisions of the commission itself. And with that, I think I'm turning it over to you. So Mark, go ahead, Mark. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me now? There we go. Um, I'm Mark Flahan from Timmins Group on the mapping team. I'm the project manager here. A um, couple uh, things that we're going to talk to you guys about is some of the tools that we have available for you, the citizens, to uh, be involved and uh, look at the data and even submit your own maps. Uh, the first four things that we want to talk about, and if you did come to the Community of Interest listening tour, you've already heard me talk about uh, two of them. Um, first one is Social Economic Report. Um, Hunter, uh, it's got about 13 demographic points for all of Arizona, so you can go there and look at demographics for the entire state. Um, that is available online today. Um, community of interest report. We took the community of interest survey that we had 910 digital submissions. Uh, and out of that, we have 182 groups of community of interest uh, defined. Uh, the other thing that we have for the mapping tools that we'll get into is the redistricting system itself. Allows you to draw and submit uh, proposed map changes. The website is there on the screen for you. Uh, and the last piece that we'll talk about is our IRC Mapping Hub, which is a centralized place for you to go get anything uh, map-related. Um, so the first thing, social economic report. We talked about demographics. Uh, listed on the screen there is all the different demographic points for the entire state of Arizona. Um, there's actually two different um, applications out there. So there's a story map and a web app. Um, same data. Go ahead and consume it any way that you would like. Um, community of interest report. So here's a sample of what one of the uh, 182 groups looks like. This is in the Catalina foothills uh, in the Tucson area. And what we did is we looked at all the information and lines that we got back. And we counted the amount of overlap. So however many times um, multiple people said that this is our community of interest, uh, we grouped those together. And then we um, had five different categories from the highest number of overlaps to the lowest number of overlaps. So on the screen there, you can see the dark red uh, is where it had the highest number of overlaps. And the last category is very faint to see on that screen, but it's uh, almost a white gray color with uh, a gray line on it. 
And that report is on the IRC Mapping Hub for you be, to be able to uh, go look at. And at the very bottom of the page is actually uh, all of the paper submittals, too, that we had. There was over 200 of them. So you can download that Excel spreadsheet today. Um, real quick, what were we looking for for a community of interest? Um, so where people have common social and economic interests, shared characteristics, experiences, similar issues or impacts of government policy. Um, and it's basically a geographic area with a shared benefit uh, from being kept undivided in a single district. Um, so redistricting system. So what are the benefits of the redistricting system that we have? Uh, anyone cre can create an account. It's online 24-7, 365 access for you today to go create an account and draw your own map, view the grid map. Uh, you can look at all the demographic points that are in there. You can look at the uh, competitive data that we have in there. So you have access to the same data that the commission has access to to draw your maps. Um, again, there is the URL. Uh, early this morning, we added a new feature that will allow you to draw a single district. So now when you create your account and you log in, you're going to have four choices that pop up to you. The first two is, will allow you to work off the grid map as a template. And the last two that's named Focus Legislative and Focus Congressional District will allow you to go in and just draw the single district. Um, so the template's already set up. You'll have uh, all the population sitting in a not to consider district. And then district one will be the district that you draw. Um, and that'll be the one that you can submit. So now you do not have to um, balance the entire map. You can just submit your one district. Um, this is the IRC mapping hub. That is the URL on the screen. Um, don't worry about trying to memorize it. You can easily get there from the IRC's website, which is irc.az.gov, and go to the Maps tab, and there is a link right there. Um, so what is it? It is a centralized location for everything, maps, apps, training on the redistricting system, information about the grid maps, demographic competitive data, you want to download uh, PDFs of all the grid maps, you're more than welcome to per district or for the entire state. Um, the GIS data for all the mapping people are there. Um, so that is that centralized place that you can find that. Uh, and going forward, once uh, there are draft maps approved and or final maps, this will be, again, the landing place for it. Um, so those pages will be coming soon. Uh, on the screen now is the grid map. Um, Brett already mentioned it, but the commission uh, adopted on the 14th of September. Um, congressional is on the left and the legislative is on the right. Um, it started at the township median, which is 19th Avenue and the corner of um, Brand and McDowell in the Phoenix area. Um, and there the commission directed us to build the grid map in a clockwise manner from that median. So we divided the state into four different quadrants uh, and then built it in a clockwise manner. Um, again, if you go to the hub, you click on the grid map page, it'll talk all about it. Um, again, there's the exact page for the grid map if you really wanted to jot it down. And that is all I had. That was the schedule moving forward. Um, other than that, I can give it over to Lori. Before we move on to agenda item three, public comments, uh, I will read the rules of the meeting. Citizens may only speak when recognized by the chair or the presiding officer of the meeting if the chair is absent or has otherwise delegated hearing administration authority. In compliance with Arizona's open meeting law, speakers should confine their statements to the issue on the posted agenda, which is before the commission. Speakers are also requested to limit their comments to approximately three minutes. In an effort to allow for as many speakers as possible, the commission may adjust the time limits depending on the amount of speakers requesting to be heard. Additionally, speakers are required to follow proper decorum. Speakers must use appropriate language. Foul and or abusive language will not be tolerated. 
any speaker failing to follow proper decorum or any other guidelines may be asked to leave. Any breach of the peace or disruption of commission public hearing may be cause a report to law enforcement. If someone has already expressed the same sentiment you wish to express, you may say so and your comments will be recorded. This is a nonpartisan meeting. Please do not distribute political material in the meeting room. Opposing viewpoints may be expressed by the citizens present. As a courtesy, citizens are reminded to address their comments to the chair and the commission and not to the audience present. Please show respect for all speakers and avoid personal comments. Remember, the commission must hear all sides of an issue to make an informed decision. And I will send that back over to Vice Chair Watchman. Thank you, Lori and others for the presentation. Uh, now we will begin the public comment portion. Uh, will staff read the names of the first speakers and the ones in the queue? Lori. I'm sorry, Val. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Valerie Newman. I'm the executive assistant here at the IRC. Our first speaker is Justin Wilmeth, our state representative. Our second speaker will be John Crane, Vice Mayor of Carefree. And our third speaker will be Thomas McGuire, Cave Creek Council person. Appreciate that. I'd hate to lean down too much. My back would hurt. Uh, Justin Wilmoth, LD15, that is the... Uh, uh, North Phoenix uh, district is what I call it. So roughly right now we're between Cactus Road up Scottsdale Road to Lone Mountain or Carefree Highway and from Scottsdale Road over to 67th Avenue or 51st Avenue, um, which is basically divided into about four, maybe five of those grid map districts at this point, just for your guys' reference. Um, so I am here to advocate for the North Phoenix district. Um, obviously, I'm very interested in how this whole process goes. Um, and I can say this afternoon, I did go on the website and test out the legislative district option, and I made a fun little uh, map here with a population of 238,741 and a deviation of only 358. Basically, my thought process on the map that I went with was this, is that obviously after uh, canvassing my current district the last couple of years and kind of seeing different areas of my current district, I do believe that there's a better way that my district could be formed in the future. And so roughly what I have it is now, is Bell Avenue, or Bell Road rather, and Union Hills is the southern boundary. I-17 is the western boundary. Maricopa County, Yavapai as the northern boundary. And Scottsdale Road and then up into the country as the boundary between the current LD15 and 23. And I went with those because I do believe that those are all community of interest lines. It's a little tougher in the city areas to find true communities of interest, but I do believe that it is a different um, setup between the 17 on the east of west of that and um, Scottsdale Road, Scottsdale and North Phoenix are definitely two different communities of interest. Another problem that I saw in the current maps is that LD1 which is the Avapai County District traditionally comes down into Maricopa County. I feel like the people that are in Anthem and New River and Carefree and Cave Creek don't get the same kind of representation they might from um, people in other districts because LD1 is the uh, is the Prescott, Prescott Valley District, and that's no shame to that at all. But that's a long way between uh, the center of that district and the southern edge of LD1, which is only mere minutes from my house, which right now we're in 23. 15 is just a few hundred feet that way. And then LD1 comes down to Carefree Highway right now. Mm -hmm. So the reason that I went with this map is mainly to cure that issue of the communities of interest uh, violation, in my opinion, with LD1 coming over the mountains into Maricopa County. But along the way, I did believe I found some better uh, communities of interest lines in what is now currently 15 and the dividing line between LD22 and 23, which is the uh, Scottsdale district. Because again, I feel like that that's a a good line point between those two districts. So I guess that's what I really had to say there. I uh, appreciate y'all doing this. It's uh, quite a difficult task and uh, I do appreciate all the work you're putting into it. So that's my, uh, my piece. Thank you. Thank you. So good afternoon. I'm John Crane, the Vice Mayor of Carefree. 
Uh, the proposed Arizona congressional district map places Carefree in a small portion of Maricopa County into congressional district number two. District two is primarily rural and encompasses about half of our state. And I think it's fair to say Carefree can better best be described as a suburban community. In reviewing the Congressional District 1 map, we find District 1 is, contigu is contiguous to the small portion of Maricopa County. And this includes Carefree. I suggest that this small portion of Maricopa County be included and be moved into District 1. So should this small portion of Maricopa County be moved into District 1, the compactness of District 1 would be maintained. Existing Maricopa County town and city boundaries would continue to be respected. And we know the congressional districts will have equal populations to the extent practicable, which is on the order of about 784,000 people. So the population of Carefree, Cave Creek, and a small portion of Maricopa County is probably on the order of 20 to 30,000 people. So an adjustment can probably be made to allow for this, this change. And probably most importantly, our infrastructure and social and financial needs within Carefree more closely align with those in District 1. So while some of my most enjoyable experiences with the, the people in the land in District 2 or have been experienced in, in District 2, I think my community, the town of Carefree, would be much better served in District 1. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Good to see you. Uh, I'm uh, Tom McGuire, and I am a council person in Cave Creek. We know that every vote should count. If the districts are competitive, if they are not drawn in such a way that one party or the other has an unclear advantage, then everybody gets a chance to have their vote count. And we know that's very important. And I will say also, it is the duty of us as citizens to get out and vote. No matter how we feel, we should be there. And having been there, our vote should count. And, and I also thank uh, the previous two speakers about speaking how Cape, Carefree and Cape Creek can be better represented by being communities that have more in common with others in their legislative districts. Thank you. Our next three speakers will be Lynn Walsh, Abby Hemingway, and Victoria Kanzelarek. I wanna thank the commission for taking so much of their time and interest in listening to public input. My name is Lynn Walsh, and I've been a, a resident here in Cave Creek and carefree, we're the same community, for 33 years. I've been active in numerous nonprofit boards, active in my church. I've written grants for the town. I've done environmental education, and I just am passionate about loving this community. What I see is our population of interest centers are the northeast part of the valley, especially, particularly North Scottsdale and North Phoenix, where we shop and have medical care. We have nothing in common with a far afield rural communities way north. I feel it is very important that the new districts be very competitive to mitigate extremism. When districts do not balance political persuasions, the result is one group ruled by the most extreme points of view have no compulsion to campaign to the whole population. Competitive districts require candidates appeal to broad sections of the population and lead to moderation in vibrant communities. Competitive districts are necessary for healthy democracy so no one feels disenfranchised and left out. I also support redistricting, respecting and representing minority and communities of color Arizona is a diverse and growing community, which we need to respect in the mapping process. Please make our maps competitive. Thank you for using your time and talents to better serve our state and communities. Uh, 
My name is Abby Hemingway. I've lived in Arizona since 1956, graduating from the U of A in 60 and NAU in 86. I've lived in Tucson, Scottsdale, and when they moved to Cape Creek 30 years ago. And also, I've been a member of the Environmental Education Group Desert Awareness Committee for 30 years. I live in LD1 and CD6 and feel that my representatives just do not need to hear from me. Therefore, I am most concerned with the creation of districts that are fair and competitive because I feel that if this is done, it solves just about everything else. Competitive districts encourage voter participation, which is a good thing. Fewer people will bother to vote if the outcome of an election is a foregone conclusion, and that's not good in my view. In addition, competitive districts force candidates to appeal to the broad spectrum of the voters in the district, not only when they're campaigning, but it also guards against their backing of extreme bills after they are elected. Case in point, Karen Fan represents my district in the Arizona Senate. Having won the last election by over 76% of the vote, she knows that the only voters she has to please are those in her party. So she can embark on projects like hiring an inexperienced group with an agenda like cyber ninjas to perform a so-called audit of the 2020. Okay. I just wanted to give an example. Okay. Um, so in other words, um, she can, and any legislator can in a district that's not representative, um, they can support bills that uh, even 80% of the voters would not in that district would not agree with. So, I just believe that our non-competitive district requires no moderation at all. I just ask the commissioners to keep the, pre, the key principles in mind when you draw the districts. And I thank you so much for spending all of this time to get the facts about how people feel in the various communities around Arizona. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm Victoria Kozlerich. I'm from LD23, where I am the chair of the LD23 Democrats. I want to thank you for the opportunity to um, make a little presentation to you today, and I actually have a visual aid to do that. What, what I wanted to talk to you about is the makeup of LD23. You've heard from other residents of LD23 at previous commission meetings who have talked about how uncompetitive LD23 is. If you look at the map there, it's most of uh, number four as it's, as it's currently mm -hmm. configured. LD23 right now consumes 1,200 square miles, it's 57 voting precincts and 185,000 voters. We include all of Scottsdale, all of Fountain Hills, uh, Rio Verde, and uh, all of the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. So we have a big footprint, and we have a lot of um, Republicans compared to Democrats in our district. And that's what I wanted to talk with you about. It would be really easy for us to reach some conclusions about why LD23 is or isn't competitive. And I wanna walk you through what's actually going on here because there's more to it than meets the eye. Make, I wanna make sure that you can see this. Is that a large enough letter? Mm -hmm. Okay. In LD23, our breakdown of party registrations, and I'm gonna talk about party registrations as well as vote counts, because those two things uh, help explain uh, what's going on behind these numbers. The party breakdown across Legislative District 23 is 45% Republican, 30% independent and 25% Democrat. And if you looked at that just on its face, you might say, well, all the, the Democrats have to do in this case 
is appeal to more independence. That seems logical, but there's something going on here that's not terribly obvious. These are the number of voters in each of these registration categories. 84,000 Republicans, 55,000 Independents, and 46,000 Democrats. The key to understanding these data is this number right here, the independent number, because what's hidden in that independent number is the old 80-20 rule. 80% of the independents in Legislative District 23 lean Republican, 20% lean Democratic. What that means, practically speaking, is that in the Arizona Senate race, Democrats have not won that race in 10 years, and this is why. The proportion of the vote count, no matter what the vote count is, is always 60-40. We lose by 20 points, no matter what. In the AZ House races, it's a little bit better. 35, 35, and 30 when we run a single candidate. Now, the interesting thing about all of this is, is that when it comes to down ballot races, we do pretty well when we're able to to talk to voters about our values and share those values with voters, we make really great progress in places like school boards and um, uh, city council and town council races. So I wanted to just make sure that you understand this because this is a feature of that your geographic area. And your that's your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, we will turn it back over to Tucson. But before we go there, I would like to remind everyone of the rules of the meeting. There's a portion I'll reread again in case anybody didn't hear it. Uh, speakers are required to follow proper decorum. Speakers must use appropriate language. Foul and or abusive language will not be tolerated. Any speaker failing to follow proper decorum or any other guidelines may be asked to leave. Any breach of the peace or disruption of a commission public hearing may be the cause of report to law enforcement. I'll send it over to Tucson now. Thank you, Laurie. Commissioners and listening audience, I am gonna read the first four names. If you'll please follow that order and start lining up. The first speaker is David Garcia. Second speaker, Mike Wilson. Third speaker, Barbara Ware. Fourth speaker, George McGaffey. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Garcia. I live here in the city of Tucson, and I'm a member of the Don Autumn Nation. And so I'm speaking as a community of interest. Uh, those of you who may not be aware of, uh, we are the uh, second or third largest tribe, uh, barely recognized tribe in the state of Arizona. And so our population is 30 to 35,000 tribal members. And so it's in behalf of not only the Thohmata Nation's members, but also the community as a whole within the, within the Pima County. So I would uh, strongly, strongly recommend that you take a, a look at uh, in the best interest of the, not only Pima County, but also the tribal members, not only including Thohmata Nation, but also the Pasquayaki tribe. And so that's how important it is if we want to be transparent in regards to the redistricting, but also as far as uh, representation. And so I'm looking forward to those changes and to be recognized because again, uh, we have been part of this uh, for a very long time, but I just feel as an individual, and I'm speaking only for myself, is that we've been, we've been put on the back burner in, 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 in as far as representation on the state legislators uh, level and also congressional uh, level. So it's truly important that we, that you look at that politically 
but also as a former tribal leader, those are the kinds of things that we, we as tribal or former tribal leaders want to initiate and speak to when it comes to uh, indigenous people as a whole. So thank you so much. Good afternoon, and welcome to Chukshon. Chukshon is a Thon Autumn word for those of you that know it as Tucson. I come to here as a enrolled member of the Thon Autumn Nation, only as a member of civil society, not representing any tribal government, especially my own nor any of the other 21 federally recognized tribes in Arizona. I say welcome to Tukshan, because within an, a mile and a half from this very location, the sacred place, the sacred land that we're sitting at, are the pit houses, our ancestral remains of the Thon the village of Tukshan. So this area is our sacred land. It's our ancestral land. But more importantly, it's our spiritual land. It is what remains of our spiritual land. So for all of us, welcome. I give you greetings in the name of the Creator and all of them peoples. My concern as a Native American, and I've never been referred to, and this is the first, by the way, as a community of interest, but I guess there's an emerging vocabulary that I got to get used to. During my, during my 22 years of service in the Army, I was never referred to as a community of interest until now but that's okay. My point is that I fear that indigenous communities, indigenous nations, indigenous peoples, if we're not careful in this redistricting, that we will be pushed aside as we have been for over 500 years already. We are here. We're an awesome land and welcome. Bless you. All of us. May we be blessed for standing in this in this sacred country and this the sacred land and that sacred flag. Again, my concern if we're not careful in this redistricting, we will be lost in the shuffle. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi, this is Barbara. My, my name is Barbara Ware, and I live in the southern part of Pima County which is currently part of CD2 and LD2. I reside in a semi-rural gated retirement community surrounded by pecan orchards, BLM land, and another small residential development. I moved here from Oregon with my husband in 2019 and love our new state of Arizona. The reason we moved to the area outside Sarita Green Valley was because it was a semi-rural with conservative values. I have so much in common with the other residents in my community and the surrounding areas. This area consists of individuals who live a very active lifestyle by golfing, pickleball, tennis, hiking, biking, and socializing. I have seen the recently released grid maps. I understand they represent a neutral starting place, 
but I would like to see adjustments taking into account my communities of interest and following that criteria in the law in making the final maps. Those criteria are compliance with section two of the Voting Rights Act, prohibiting the splitting of minority areas, equal population in districts, compact and contiguous districts, reflecting the community's interests within them and using recognized boundaries as district borders. My community consists of residents that have retired from fields of business, management, law enforcement, education, and military. They're educated, well-traveled, pro-Second Amendment, and very well-informed. A large portion are veterans, including my husband. English is our primary language. We attend church in Green Valley, shop in Sarita, Tubac, and Oro Valley, and frequent restaurants in Tubac, Vale, and Armada. Please consider placing the communities of Sarita, Corona de Tucson, Vail, Sierra Vista, Catalina Foothills, Saddlebrook, Oral Valley, and Marana, Mariana together in the same district. We have very little in common with our current district, which includes the city of Tucson and the Gauls. Thank you for your time and hard work accomplishing this tremendous task. Hello, commissioners. My name is George McGaffey. I'm from LD2. I have lived in Green Valley for the past four years. I am a community leader helping to distribute food at the food banks, volunteering in my HOA, a leader in my church, and helping register high school students to vote, plus assisting in other community programs. The reason for the new map has gotten lost. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, has been replaced with numbers counts. It is within the people and their diversity that makes our state strong. In these times of political division, Arizona has become a purple state. Neither major party has a strong hold on its voters. As of July of this year, a third of all registered voters in Arizona are independent. The final map should reflect this new made up by honoring the U.S. Voting Rights Act. Therefore, protecting the voting power of the communities of diversity. This should encourage competitive districts with highly participation in our elections and guard against extremism. Fair and competitive maps from the voters, when the voters pass the Prop 106, competitive districts are favored if they don't significantly harm the others. One person, one vote principle in our democracy is important, but so is the representation of all, including minorities in our community. Our community's strong points is its diversity. From Nogales to South Tucson, there is a diverse array of colors, religion, creeds, politics, and beliefs. Our candidates must reflect the ever-growing community of diversity as stated in the 2016 unanimous Supreme Court decision. Most districts by necessity will be large, but the driving distance should be given high consideration. The driving, driving distance from Sarita and Green Valley to Sierra Vista is, is not a short distance, but may seem long when compared to other areas. But the distance between the two communities does not reflect the different needs of the people in the two communities. This assortment of different needs is because of the geographical, it's not because of geographic, the assortment of different needs is because of geographic makeup and not the geographical distance. The map should reflect the voices in these two different communities, especially those voices from the Latino and Native American communities to be heard. The new LD19 map splits the Tejano nations in half. District boundaries of tribal communities should, should not be divided. The, the current map has divided them into two districts, one in Pima County and the other in Yuma County. It is not reasonable to do it again. It has become a human right issue when the large diverse nation is divided into multiple districts and counties. Boundaries should respect the communities of interest of our tribes and communities of color. It is critical to consider the population increase of these communities in the 2020 census and the registrating voting history. Arizona and these diverse states, I wish to thank the committee for their time in this personal action. Thank you. I will be reading six speakers. Please follow 
by lining up on this side. Ken Zibal, Joe Bogart, John Maynard, Susan Cousy, Stan Kane. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Zebel. I live in Saddlebrook and um, we are generally underrepresented and I need your help to get us properly represented. Uh, my communities of interest include Catalina, Saddlebrook Ranch, Vistoso, Oro Valley, and generally the northern part of uh, Pima County, the southern part of Pinal County. Um, where I go to church is the Vista de la Montaña United Methodist Church in Catalina. It's a small church of about 300, 330 members, and we share uh, same values. And again, I don't think we're sufficiently represented. Uh, we shop locally at Bashes, at Fry's, and uh, all my medical providers, doctors, dentists, all those people, are still in that same geographical area that I live in, and uh, we like it there. But I don't feel that we're sufficiently represented, and I need your help to get us sufficiently represented. Thank you so much. I'm Joe Bogart, Miranda, Arizona. And uh, I'm actually, I've uh, spoken before, you've got my views, I'm not going to repeat them again. But I do have some concerns on, uh, I went to the, to the mapping site, the grid, and uh, what I noticed here is when I went, uh, when I looked at it, is that, and you're not going to be able to see this, but uh, I saw four, scroll down and I saw four uh, statewide uh, redistricting maps. All right. To the right of those, I saw some blow up of specific. This happens to be Maricopa County blow up here. And uh, on there, you can, if you're on your website, not on my sheet here, but if you look at it, you can actually see street grids in here. I can see uh, communities named. All right. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to investigate what you did in Pima County, because that's where I live. So I scrolled down to find there are four of these maps here. And I went to see one for Pima County, not one, zero. This is the map that we have to go off of is the whole state map. How in the heck can we de de can de determine the lines if they are so small. If you look at the, if you, you look at your state map there, look at this right here. The big red circle on it is is uh, Maricopa. All right. Could you imagine what your constituents in Maricopa, Maricopa would say if you gave them this map and says, "Now make a determination. Give us a comment on looking at that map." All right. Now we're smaller than that down here. How in the heck, well, we can't blow that map up like you do on your screen here. How can we determine whether we like what you said or what, what, what you drew or what you didn't? So what I do is I request that you put a map similar to the ones that you have for Maricopa County, one for Pima County, so we can actually see what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Just a reminder to the, the listening audience, when you are clapping and you are speaking, our live WebEx mic will not pick up the speaker. So if you'll just please be mindful of that. We have people that are listening on the live WebEx, so they will not be able to hear the speaker. So if you'll just be mindful of that. The next speaker, John Maynard. Good afternoon, commissioners. I certainly appreciate your time and what you're doing for us here. Uh, I live in Oro Valley, 
I've been a resident of Arizona for about 16, well, actually 26 years. I uh, moved to Oro Valley because of the population, the makeup, and so forth. Uh, my community of interest includes uh, Marana, Oro Valley, Catalina, Eagle Crest, Saddlebrook, and Saddlebrook Ranch. I have three children in the area. I have seven wonderful grandchildren in the area. I worship at a church in the community. My two favorite restaurants are in this community. I have 300 person friends that I communicate with uh, frequently, multiple times every, every week. Uh, probably, uh, I'm getting gestures from Madam Chair, Commissioners, can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? Hello. Hello. Okay. This one. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you so much for the, the great work that you're doing. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity here uh, to speak with you. My name is John Maynard. I'm a resident of Oro Valley. Uh, my communities of interest include Marana, Oro Valley, Catalina, Eagle Crest, Saddlebrook, Saddlebrook Ranch. I've got three uh, children and uh, seven wonderful grandchildren in the area. Uh, I worship at a church in the community. My favorite restaurants are in the community. I have 300 personal friends and associates I communicate with multiple times each week, sometimes probably more often than they would like. I have similar lifestyles, education, work experience, and interest in the people in the community. I uh, have civic and professional meetings weekly and monthly there. In my community, I find we have a group of well-informed, very active and highly motivated individuals. I'm active in the Amplify uh, School District, attend their meetings. I have two grandchildren in the schools there. Miranda School Board meetings, I have one grandchild there. We'll have several more. Uh, I'm currently in LD11 on the grid map that you show. It looks like it's 16 or so. i uh, very much like to keep that pretty much uh, close to what it is now because I have so much in interest with the people there. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Hello, my name is Suzanne Cousy, and I live at 5830 West Turkey Lane. Um, we're off of the Twin Peaks exit. Uh, I have been a homeowner since 2001 and um, have lived here since 2013. Um, what I'd like also, please, be, I'm sorry I didn't say this earlier, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. My communities of interest are also Marana, Oro Valley, Catalina, Eagle Crest, and Saddlebrook. Um, my church is in Oro Valley, St. Mark's Church. I'm very active in the church. Um, I sing in the choir and have many close friends there. Um, we shop in that area, and um, my main concern for right now is would like to keep our legislative district the same. Um, we have a special interest, and I live in a slightly rural area. We have a cul-de-sac. There's approximately 90 residents there, and more than half of the residents are horse owners. We'd like to, we spent a lot of money on our properties there. We'd like to, that's our special interest. It also affords businesses for the blacksmiths and the veterinarians that live in the area. Um, we all, many families also have different farm animals um, to include uh, some, uh, mostly chickens and pigs. But um, I would like the district to stay the same or as much as possible. 
And um, I, once again, would like to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. My name is Stan Kane, and I live in Tucson, Arizona. I'm a retired federal civil servant. Now, except for three years of a job reassignment, I lived within a three mile radius of Pima County, unincorporated city of Tucson since 1998. I've owned homes in this limited area, raised three awesome kids, taught as a substitute teacher and built my life there. I understand that change is inevitable, but I am happy my current legislative district nine, LD nine. I'm a precinct committeeman, a state delegate, and a state committeeman. LD9 is easy to navigate and to be part of, and is totally contained within Pima County. The new District 21 that you propose to put me in is none of these things. District 21 is not continuous as it stretches from the Mexico border to Phoenix and nearly halfway to Yuma. It includes two Indian reservations and areas of interest that are not mine, such as mining, farming, cattle, and more. Now, I'm in favor of keeping the reservations unsplit as they have common interests, goals, and community. And I'm also in favor of the cultural diversity maintaining for minorities. But as you can see, I am not a minority. The new District 21 has a polygon area test of over 8,000. This is one of the three highest numbers in the proposed areas you have. It does not adhere to the requirement of using natural landmarks and geography. An example is Interstate 10. This landmark roadway would make a wonderful boundary. My house is east of I-10, about a mile in a small subdivision of 69 homes. It's just off Cortero Farms Road. The new District 21 crossed, it crossed over this natural boundary, grabbed my little neighborhood, and by crossing over this natural boundary, it captured my neighborhood. Now, visually, what does it look like? It looks like a puzzle piece with a very small nub on it. It makes no logical sense to include my area in District 21 as it violates the I-10 natural boundary. Now, another example of violating natural boundaries is the number of counties included in District 21. As I stated in current LD9, it's contained solely in Pima County. The new District 21 covers several counties. This makes it nearly impossible to be involved in my LD county government. I'd have to drive hundreds of miles just to attend Board of Supervisor meetings. The natural boundaries of county lines should be considered. Now, I'm not trying to create issues, and I'm just trying to live my life, be involved, and be an informed citizen. I welcome logical change, appropriate change. Please reconsider throwing my neighborhood into this no man's land of District 21. Now, in short, it's almost over, guys. My family made our lives meld in this area, and it brings us comfort that we know the people, the shops, the history, the culture, and what's happening in the area. I go to Phoenix a few times a year, mainly to the airport, and to Nogales a couple times a year for the food. I've never been to any tribal meetings or council, though I'd love to go. There's got to be a better way of keeping continuity in my area, so please don't put me at 21. And lastly, I did submit a proposed map. It's called LD0005. Once again, LD005. It's passed the, the integrity check of your system. I ask you to consider it as a viable alternative. Thank you very much for your work and your dedication. We'll send it back to Scottsdale. Hey, y'all, thanks for the work you're doing. Really appreciate it. I just want to say that uh, I appreciate the map with the uh, uh, legislative district where you've got us all back in the Maricopa County, which I believe is where we belong. We, uh, we really shouldn't be split up with all those folks up north. And as far as the congressional district, uh, you can't get a more broader spectrum of the United States of America's population than what you've got in this one. I think I appreciate it because it represents everyone. Y'all are doing a great job. Thank you much. Thank you. Hello there, my name is Gayla Parrish and I'm a precinct committeeman for LD1. I have received, I have, I have um, reviewed the preliminary maps and I have two concerns that I'd like to talk about. Number one, CD map. Um, 
for us up there in the north. Anthem is cut in two. And if you live in Anthem, Anthem is a very close-knit community. If you live there, you go to the doctor there, you go to the dentist there, the schools are there. You only have to drive a few miles to go to a hospital. So they're very close-knit. And to be cut in two, I know they would they would appreciate not being cut in two. And the other legislative district um, I would like to talk about, um, we're in LD1. And um, I have a map that I have made up. What I'd like to say about that is if you look on the number four that you've made, LD4, you cut it off at, at Carefree Highway and then you go way down and then you go in. And I believe the lawyer guy, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. He said you're not supposed to do that because right under where it says Cave Creek and number three, those are our communities. And our communities are Anthem, New River, Desert Hills, Cave Creek, Carefree, Dove Valley, and Tremonto. So I'm speaking only on location, but this is what we, these are our communities, and I would like to lovingly request that we keep them all together. And I have a map about it, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm her better half. My name is John Parrish. Uh, I live not far from here, uh, 7th Avenue and, and Joy Ranch Road, the Desert Hills area. And I'd like to talk first about uh, your drawing for Congressional District 2. Uh, and as it is drawn, there's several problems with it, probably provisions B, C, and D. Uh, so we are included in that in the Prescott, Flagstaff uh, population areas. And uh, those are their, their areas of interest, uh, and also a vast rural area, Coconino County, all the way around the eastern side of uh, Arizona down to the border. Um, <clears throat> our um, uh, community of interest, of course, starts pretty much with New River and south along I-17, including Anthem east and west of I-17, the communities of Desert Hills, Cave Creek, Carefree, uh, have, uh, are, have all have interest in the greater Phoenix metropolitan area. So you're not going to find much of us up in Coconino County singing cowboy ditties around a campfire unless we have elk tags and are up there for that. But uh, presently, I'm in uh, Congressional District 8, and my congressman, uh, uh, congresswoman, is uh, Debbie Lesko. And I'm a veteran, and I have issues with the VA. And I can drive over to uh, Congressman Lesko's office from here and personally talk to somebody in her staff. Uh, but I'm not going to be driving to Prescott or Flagstaff or down to Douglas, Arizona, uh, just to talk about my problems uh, with, with the VA. I'm not going to do that. Uh, the second thing is our legislative district. Uh, we are legis Right now, we're presently in, in, in LD1, Legislative District 1. You want to make up a district uh, 4 there um, that couples us with Scottsdale and Paradise Valley. We've pretty much been stepchildren of Prescott in Legislative District 1. Uh, since its inception, because all our representatives are from up there. As you have it drawn now, we're still going to be stepchildren of the Scottsdale Paradise Valley uh, community. And so uh, they think we sing cowboy ditties up here, and, and we do. But um, I would much, much rather see us draw a, a district here again, starting up in New River, uh, Black Canyon City come south along I-17, and then include uh, this, the communities along that anthem, uh, all the way down pretty much to the 101, and as far east, including Dave Creek and Carefree, uh, to Pima and south to the 101 from there. That's time, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next three speakers, before we go back to Tucson, we've got Alexander Culloden, Connie Henry, and Jaylene Griffin. Uh, good 
Commissioners, thanks for coming uh, into our neck of the woods uh, to have this meeting. We appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. <clears throat> I was reading uh, during the first listening tour uh, that, uh, that there had been some comments from the commission uh, that uh, they were surprised that nobody seemed to be coming to the meetings and saying that they liked their current district. Everybody liked to change. Well, I'm here to tell you that I really like my current district. Um, I live in Legislative District 23, which is Old Town Scottsdale, uh, North Scottsdale, and Fountain Hills, primarily. Uh, and to tell you that these constitute a community of interest will be obvious to basically anybody from Arizona. Um, the they, economy in all these three places is basically exactly the same. It's high-value services, uh, tourism, resorts. Uh, and so the types of people who live in all three places, professionals uh, who work in these sorts of industries. Um, and there's, it seems to be a bit of a change to the district with the District 4 that's on the current map. Uh, but District 4 essentially cuts out North Scottsdale and loops around uh, over to Anthem. Uh, and that doesn't seem to be very contiguous or compact. Now, Scottsdale itself is not particularly compact. It's elongated, uh, but it is more compact than cutting out part of Scottsdale and looping over. And, you know, the chairman of the LD23 Democrats had said that, uh, that it wasn't a very competitive district, but it, but it should be borne in mind that in the 20, uh, 2018 cycle, uh, the Democrats almost picked up a House seat. They came within three points. Uh, and in the last cycle, they're a little bit more distant, but not much. With demographic changes, the district is, is becoming quite competitive. The mayor of Scottsdale, which is the largest portion of the district, is a Democrat in all of that. Uh, so I'll leave you with this final thought. The way that I'm dressed now, I can go to any part of LD23, go out to the bar, and be sharp. If I go south of there, I'm way overdressed and I'm square. If I go to Cave Creek, they're going to be like, where's your Stetson, partner? So if that ain't a community of interest, what is? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Hi, my name is Connie Campbell Henry, and I live in Anthem. And I want to thank uh, the commission for drawing the map that brought us back down into Maricopa County instead of having Anthem be in LD1, uh, where it has been since I've lived here for 20 years. Uh, but I do have a few suggestions on that. Uh, as the parishes who spoke a little earlier, uh, Anthem has been divided in two. Uh, and I think that's an important thing that you need to take into consideration. Anthem is on the east side and the west side of I-17. Now, I know I-17 is a natural boundary, but I think it's important on that northern part of the valley to understand the communities there. Our communities of interest live on both sides of I-17 going from basically New River all the way down to uh, 101. And to split those communities is very um, problematic. Our school districts are set up so that populations come from both sides of I-17 to the uh, Deer Valley School District. Uh, so I would love for you to consider that in your um, transitions here. Uh, and that was for the legislative district, you uh, cut Anthem in half. And in the CD, in the congress congressional districts, we're now becoming the same situation we had with LD1. Anthem is stuck in with uh, La Paz County and Mojave County. And that again is a problematic for um, being off in the one little segment there. We really consider ourselves part of Maricopa um, Phoenix uh, area. We do all of our schools, our shopping, um, I'm, I founded an orchestra and a chorale, and we have over 100 people that rehearse every week, and we're all within that corridor. 
And the idea that we would use that as a dividing line, you're not considering those areas of interest that most people have that live in that area. And we're very diverse and much more diverse than men, than the uh, Mojave County and La Paz County. And as spoken to earlier, competitiveness is prime. We need to have competitiveness. And these areas are diverse that I'm speaking about, my areas of interest. So I hope you would please consider carefully how you make your slice and dice. Thank you. And I appreciate all that you do around the state to pull this off. Hello, I'm Jalen Griffin out of LD1 currently. And I would like to speak about um, the current grid map you have. You have a SIN 4. And I think people have already expressed their opinion about how that's been drawn. It's concerning. We're not really rural. We consider ourselves a very tight-knit community. And I have a map also that I have drawn that would put us up to not split Anthem, like the last lady spoke to, go up to Black Canyon, go down to the 101, I-17, go over to the west side a little bit, over to Pima Road and up and around. Picking us from LD1 into four, wrapping us all the way down underneath into North Scottsdale, that is not our community. We have a lot of shopping up and down the corridor, like that lady said, that we feel very, very comfortable in our area. Having us drive 35, 40 minutes to go into an area way down on Shea, I mean, it, it's, it, it makes no sense to me. Uh, so I really think you need to really, really look at how you've drawn these maps and bring us more into the D3 area, Dove Valley, because we're currently Anthem, New River, Dove Valley, Cave Creek, Carefree, Desert Hills, Toronto. And as it says in your provision number C, keep us compact. You look at that, the way you've drawn that, that's not compact. You have us going like this and this and this. It, it's a little crazy, to be honest. So if you could really, really consider how our community is and keep us all in a compact area, we would all really, really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now on to Tucson. Just a reminder to my Tucson uh, listeners here, we have 79 speakers, so as I read your name, if you would please line up according to how I read your name on this side, uh, please do so. The next speaker is Elizabeth Packard, Sherilyn Young, Lyle Aldridge, Pam Burry, Shirley Mooney. Oh, good evening. My name is Elizabeth Packard, and I very much appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts on the most recent um, grid, grid maps and redistricting. I moved to Arizona about 50 years ago and have raised three children here, was a teacher in the Amphi schools for 20 years, and I lived much of that time in Midtown. But about a year ago, I moved to Oral Valley to be closer to my youngest and most adorable grandchildren. <laughs> so uh, living in more than one neighborhood in Tucson has given me a broader perspective on the character of greater Pima County. Moving to Oral Valley has been quite delightful. I have enjoyed the kindness and the friendliness, uh, the hospitality of new neighbors and friends. Um, and I have uh, much to be appreciate, no much to appreciate. However, my um, only disappointment has been the lack of diversity or demographic balance in my legislative district, which has been currently LD11. I also um, just noted recently, uh, looking at these maps, that Pima County, which formerly had five legislative districts, now has only four listed. So I am somewhat concerned about that. Yes, okay. Um, I ask that this commission draw district boundaries 
that consider the population increases of 2020 census and the registration and voting history, which in Arizona is one third Republican, one third Democrat and one third independent, as has been previously noted. I look forward to draw, seeing districts uh, drawn, redrawn, so that in 2022, when I vote, I can find viable candidates, candidates from each of our political parties who represent at least some of my points of view. Lacking that opportunity invites political extremism, as there is no need to represent a diverse constituency if only one voting bloc dominates the legislature or the congressional district. Thank you for, uh, to the commission for signing on for this um, demanding position and for encouraging citizens like me to participate in the democratic process. My name is Sherilyn Young. I'm a retired physician who's lived in Tucson for 40 years. I hear a lot of people coming to you speaking about diversity and competitiveness. I'm here today to talk against diversity and against competitiveness. You'll notice that in the goals, the constitutional goals for the IRC, that there is no mention anywhere of diversity. The other thing I'd like to mention is that diversity, in case nobody's noticed, is the exact opposite of a community of interest. We want representation that will represent our community. The other thing I'd like to say is that competitiveness is the final the fifth of the constitutional goals and is also the least important. It says only if it doesn't interfere with the other issues. Competitiveness definitely is interfering with our communities of interest. What's happening is that the outskirts of Tucson tend to be Republican, whereas Tucson tends to be Democrat. So when there's a competitiveness, it has to include areas outside of Tucson and areas of the city. And what's happened is that the urban interests have come to subjugate all the outlying areas. That's why you're seeing all these people here today dressed in red. We're tired of being subjugated to the interests of the city of Tucson. We want representation. <laughs> We want representation for our out, outskirt areas, for our unincorporated areas, for our rural areas. I'm also noticing that with the congressional districts, we have three districts that all come into Tucson. This means that three congressional districts are gonna be influenced by the city of Tucson. Tucson should have its own congressional district, its own community of interest, and we should have better representation in the outskirts. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Lyle Aldrich. Uh, and the lady who just spoke to you happens to be a white wife, and she has a tough act to follow. Uh, she said she said most of the things I would have said, uh, except to point out that uh, as someone else already noted, it's kind of hard to look at the Tucson map and see what you're really planning to do, but it does appear to me that you're planning to split Tucson into at least three legislative districts. I realize there's nothing even remotely final about these plans, but if uh, 17 and 18 are to exist, uh, I think it would match the communities of interest better if that uh, jaggedy dividing line between North and South were a dividing line between east and west that ran up and down the Hockey Corridor and included the east side of Tucson with the uh, unincorporated area to the east of it. I also heard a lot of comments, I was at your last meeting, suggesting that uh, there was a, a belief that the current uh, 
districting was competitive. And I'm not sure that people are aware that the, the last redistricting was challenged in court and the, your predecessor commission admitted that 10 of those 30 districts, legislative districts in the state, were deliberately made non-competitive. Uh, and we can see the results of that, especially here in Pima County, where there really haven't been many Republicans elected under that plan. Uh, I would ask that you do increase some competitiveness that will allow people, the communities of interest to be represented by people who actually represent a community of interest and can represent those of us who feel the same. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shirley Muni. And I've, after visiting in Tucson for several years, I've lived in Tucson since I retired more than 20 years ago. Since then, I've been active in several community organizations, most of them nonpartisan, such as the Pima County Tucson Women's Commission, the League of Women Voters, my HOA, the Friends of the Library, Great Decisions, and AAUW, the American Association of University Women. I've always been interested in good government. In fact, government was my minor in college. As such, I want the best kind of government for my adopted state. I'm here, surrounded in a sea of red, to speak on behalf of the principle of fair and competitive districts. In fact, this was the exact ballot language for Proposition 106 in 2000, when it was handily adopted by the voters. As such, that principle became part of the Constitution of Arizona, by which we still must abide. Competitive districts force candidates to not take voters for granted, but to appeal to them by expressing their principles and priorities showing up at forums and other events, not expecting to win automatically by being in the majority party. While in primary elections, candidates can appeal to just one party by tending to take more extreme positions, in a, in a general election, if they're in a competitive district, they would have to appeal to a mixed population of voters, and their stands on issues would tend to be more moderate. Since Arizona has become much more diverse over the past 10 years, more diverse in race, gender, and especially in political affiliation, with one third of the voters registered as independent, a truly purple state, we can't take party affiliation or votes for granted by creating districts for one party or another. I therefore urge you to make after population figures and geographical features, the principle of fair and competitive districts, your priority. Thank you so much for volunteering your time, your energy, and your commitment to the cause of good government. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pam Fury, and I'm from Oro Valley. And as you... Hi, my name is Pam Fury. Oh, between them? Like that? Okay, hi. Again, my name is Pam Fury. I'm from Oro Valley, and I am a delegate for AMAC. That is the uh, Nonpartisan Association for Mature American Citizens. And right now, the district that we're in, as you know, goes from Tucson to Flagstaff to Sholo, to Sedona. That district is huge. It's like the fifth largest con congressional district in the country. I feel as an AMAC delegate, I would like to be able to represent and hear the voices of our senior citizens in the community of interest that I mentioned. And those issues that we have are Social Security, Medicare, elder care, the education of our grandchildren, and I feel that I cannot fully hear those voices when our congressional district does not include the community of interest. We have a lot of citizens 
in Oro Valley, Mariana, Saddlebrook, Saddlebrook Ranch. And as a representative for um, AMAC, as a delegate for AMAC, nonpartisan group, I would like to be able to form a chapter where I can hear these voices from our citizens, senior citizens. Because our senior citizens, we are not ready to be put out to pasture. We have a lot of living to do. We have a lot to say about that. And we would like our voices to be heard. Thank you. Madam Chair and Commissioners, I'm not sure. I think I received a message that you might want a break, a few minutes break at this moment. Correct. We will do a 10 minute break to give our transcriber a little rest here. So 10 minute break. So bear with us. Okay, I'm watching and can't hear you. Just. We'll be taking a 10 minute break at this moment. Them in break. Thank you, everybody.
I'm gonna try and see. Does that sound any better or no? Yo, 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 yo. Can you hear me? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's because I moved up. I moved.
Joanne Pierce, are you still here? Oh, okay. So. <laughs> Oops, good grief. My pardons. Hi, thank you for having me. Welcome. Us. Um, I'm Joanne Pierce. I live in Wickenburg Ranch, five miles north of the town of Wickenburg. Wickenburg Ranch Precinct is known as WIC 209. I'm the precinct captain. We are the furthest southwest section of Yavapai County and proud of it. However, the town of Wickenburg, five miles down the road, is in Maricopa County. The structures of both counties are completely different. We and the ranch are clearly less than 1,500 people. Our interests, activities, lifestyles are not in line with Phoenix proper or Maricopa County. The town of Wickenburg probably has six to 8,000 people and definitely still is a small town. The interest we have is our Western flavor. We enjoy horses, cattle, livestock. We enjoy rodeos in our five arenas just minutes from downtown. We also enjoy roping, bronc busting, mutton busting. We enjoy our small town celebrations, our cowboy traditions, Fiesta de September, High Desert Golf Classic, Bluegrass Festival, Cowboy Christmas Poetry Gathering, Christmas Parade, Old Gold Rush Days, Dance Streets, Food Truck Fests. We even celebrate taking our cowboys out together, riding through town and sending them out into the desert for a week. We welcome them back after a week and then we kick it up high on their return. We are a conservative little tiny town that thrives on God, family, manners, and morals. We enjoy good old fashioned ways of life. As you can see, our flavor for our small town does not relate in any way to Maricopa big box or big population ways. However, it's nice for us when we have those moments or desire big box amenities, we drive an hour down the road to Sun City Surprise and yes, on into Phoenix to satisfy those rare times that we want big population. It's our opinion that this redistricting, you as a board take note that the town of Wickenburg and Wickenburg Ranch are separated into two counties. It's our Wickenburg Ranch remain, it is our opinion Wickenburg Ranch remain in Yavapai County. It's also our opinions that you consider removing the town of Wickenburg from the hold of Maricopa County and also be included in the Yavapai County as it should. We enjoy a rural lifestyle. It's why we live there. It's why we moved there. We have a little in common with big city, big box, big populations such as surprise. That's time. Okay. Um, thank you for kindly hearing me. We're cow proud cowboy people. And I just want to be giving you the written and I'll hand it. Thank you kindly. Thank you. My name is Kathy Schwenke, and I live in nearby Desert Hills near I-17 and Carefree Highway in the 85086 zip code. The LD grid map divides my own precinct. My precinct is Dead Man Wash, which is, extends south of Carefree Highway. So it needs to stay in my precinct and my LD, but the LD grid map 
cuts off by precinct voters south of Carefree Highway and adds them to the LD to our south. It would be the best fix to just combine us and Anthem Desert Hills New River and also Carefree Cave Creek with those Dead Man Wash voters south of Carefree Highway, bordered by I-17 on the west and Cave Creek Road on the east. So I'm advocating that all our area be routed directly south, not with Tempe and Scottsdale, a completely different community with different schools, different fire, different police. The CD grid map cuts away Anthem and parts of New River from our Anthem New River Desert Hills community. My post office and Walmart are in the cutaway area. The map should keep us together, all of Anthem, all of New River, west and east of I-17, along with all of Desert Hills. Ever since I've lived here, 22 years, my CD has been routed south along I-17 because we are in Maricopa County and part of Phoenix. The CD grid map totally changes this. So even though we have Phoenix Board of Supervisors, Phoenix School Districts, Phoenix voting locations, not to mention Phoenix Shopping, Entertainment, Doctors, Airports, and more. Our Anthem Desert, now I'll skip that one. It is widely acknowledged that the last redistricting maps wrongly put us um, into Northern Mar our Northern Maricopa County Legislative District and with Yavapai County. Please don't allow this to happen regarding the CD grid map. Our current CD has worked fine all these years, routing us south along I-17, which is where we transit and do, do business, instead of the mountainous regions north of the Maricopa County border. The new Sleepy Ranch in eastern Dove Valley precincts east of I-17 need to stay included with their neighbor precincts near Carefree Highway um, on the east side of I-17. Take a look at that because when I went to the re-precincting meeting with the Board of Supervisors, it looks like it's splitting some precincts there. They're making a new precinct called Sleepy Ranch. The LD grid map places us into a vastly rural district, robbing us of proper representation. Just as Scottsdale and Fountain Hills are sister communities, so are Anthem, New River, Desert Hills, and Cave Creek Carefree, if you haven't gotten the message yet. And we all align with Phoenix near our um, to our near south. One last point, the CD grid map has us very out of kilter as it combines us with Yavapai County, Coconino County, Navajo County, Apache County, Gila County, Graham County, Cochise County, with whom we have no business instead of where we belong and have always been in Phoenix, Maricopa County. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, my name is Mary Jean Fincher, and I live in Paradise Valley, a Phoenix suburb about 20 miles south of here. Like many people, I've struggled to use the IRC's redistricting system tool and to find a way to intelligently look at maps being proposed by the public. So far, 23 maps have been submitted by the public, which they created using the redistricting system tool. The IRC made these maps available for public review, but only in a separate tool, the plan viewer. However, the plan viewer currently does not provide the kind of detailed analysis of demographic and competitive data and evaluation found in the redistricting system tool. The submitted maps are not listed in the redistricting system's open plan dialogue, nor does the plan viewer allow saving or exporting a map so it can be imported into the redistricting system or other mapping or and evaluation tools like PlanScore. The public needs the ability to review the submitted proposals using the full range of demographic and competitive data. Perhaps if given that ability, a submitted map could be improved upon by an unrelated person and submitted as a new proposal. We could, through that process, work together to come up with the best maps possible for Arizona. Yesterday, Timmons said they're working on a workflow to address this problem. It was not clear that when and if this workflow is created, that it will be for both the commissioners and the public. Um, 
we both need access to this workflow in order to understand and evaluate submitted maps. I also have some questions and concerns about the upcoming work sessions. Based on yesterday's discussion, the commissioners will be meeting in person and will be directing the mapping company to make adjustments to the grid maps in real time. Please consider how well will the public be able to hear and understand the comments of each commissioner and how will the public be able to see the changes being made to the maps? I submitted a public comment yesterday expressing my frustration that when the mapping company is sharing a screen during your meetings, for instance, to show how the redistricting system tool works, it is impossible for me to follow everything because it's too small. This problem needs to be resolved for the working group sessions. I've also watched the first six training videos several of them multiple times, and I have the same problems. I cannot see the speaker's screen clearly enough to follow the directions. The videos need to either include zoomed in screenshots or showing each step or be accompanied by written step-by-step -step directions or both. And finally, I'm disturbed by the delay in fulfilling public records requests. Thank you. Some of which go back to June. If justice delayed is justice denied, I think the same must be said for public records requests that languish for more than three months. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but before we, can I have Mark? Mark, can you help me here and maybe shed some light on uh, what was discussed here about access? Um, this, the, the lady's comment here. Do you have anything to add to that and, and enlighten us on access and those? issues. Uh, sure, can you hear me? Um, the, you know, there's a couple things that were discussed at uh, yesterday's meeting. Uh, I know that we ran through uh, a couple different ways of importing uh, data into the redistricting system. Um, there is also videos that were created for both uh, methods that were posted to YouTube. Um, on the commission's uh, YouTube channel. So those are there. Um, on the regards to submitted maps, um, yes, we were working on a workflow. We had it validated uh, today, and we were working on making the adjustments that uh, to make that possible where you can see submitted maps in the redistricting system and use the tools. Um, as far as the Google map or the Google Meets comment, um, I will try my best to blow up the screen a little bit more. Um, I did not know that was a concern at that time. So thank you, Mark, and thank you for raising those those issues. Uh, we're doing, uh, I guess, the best we can to provide as much information as possible, to be as as meticulous as possible when you get into the to the system. We're also trying to through YouTube's and as much tutorial as possible to give the public as much information to get access so that you, if you choose, you can draw your own maps and submit it. Next week, we'll have the, the, the first draft, and so we will do our best to make sure that everybody hears. We have access to the maps, and we'll do the best we can so that you all can see what we're going to be doing. So we're, we're doing our best, but I appreciate your concern, and thank you. So let's move on to the next speaker. Uh, Val, go ahead. We'll do three more speakers and send it back to Tucson. We've got Elaine McGuire, Nigel Terran, and Janet Moore. Hello, my name is Elaine McGuire. I'm a 21 year resident of Cave Creek. And I would just like to um, comment on the um, legislative district map. I'm so glad to see that Cave Creek is now back in Maricopa County. I really feel we had nothing in common uh, with Yavapai County and we did not get the representation uh, that we needed. We were uh, kind of the uh, stepchildren down here. Uh, the other thing with the uh, current congressional district uh, grid map, you're putting us in a district that has very little community of interest with us. Uh, we, uh, you know, Navajo County, Coconino County, they're not anything like Cave Creek, which is a suburban uh, Phoenix 
city. So I, I would commend you on doing that. And also make sure that you still keep in mind when you're doing these maps that they are fair and competitive because that is so important to move our um, fair government forward. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nigel Taplin, father of three sons who are educated in K-12s through and university here in Arizona. During my professional years, I was committed to the education of our younger students, many as head of school and early childhood through 12th grade education. On retirement two years ago, COVID permitting, and as a humanitarian, I've committed my time to the welfare of the community. For example, I am a PC and board member of LD23, and in my role as Vice Chair for Civic Engagement, I encourage people to volunteer for the city's boards and commissions and submit their candidacy for the local school boards. In my legislative district, LD23, during the last election cycle in 2020, I was astonished to discover that one party's registered voters vastly outnumbered the others by nearly double placing talented and committed, committed legislative candidates in an unelectable position, thus creating an unfair and uncom uncompetitive election cycle. I am asking the, the IRC to correct this situation by creating a fair and competitive legislative district where all voters, regardless of party affiliation, have a voice and an opportunity to make a difference with a meaningful vote. Surely, fair and competitive elections are the bedrock of our democracy. Thank you for your commitment and dedication to carry out this essential work. I mean, listening to this today, I fully understand how complicated this is and all the issues that you're dealing with. But the bottom line is we have to make sure that democracy works for us all. Thank you. I got too comfortable. My name's Janet Moore. I uh, live in the town of Cave Creek. Um, I am a realtor. I've been a realtor since 1980, I don't know, 80, 84, I think, or 85. And I've always been in the Scottsdale community. I was um, on the Government Affairs Committee for the uh, Association of Realtors. And, um, and then I became a little bit more active in about 2009, and I became a PC. So I've been very involved, and I've always been involved in Scottsdale, even though I live in the town of Cave Creek. About uh, you know, 2010, when they did the other redistricting, they did a little, bit, I'm going to call it an experiment, and they said, you're rural, so you're going to be up with Prescott and Yavapai County. And I am, I am not rural. I've always been Scottsdale urban. All my friends are, all my businesses are, all my business associates. And the, the lovely lady that was here from Wickenburg is just a perfect prop for me because she's rural. And I, and, and I think she needs to be up in Yavapai. I hope that you grant her her wish. But I really want to go back home to Scottsdale and I want to be down with, with them. I was in, in more of the LD23 situation, people before. That's where we go for restaurants. That's where we go for business. That's where my clients are. That's where my, my kids went to the school. And this school is in Scottsdale. So I would really like to be part of that community again. Um, as far as the CD uh, maps that you did, we don't have anything to do with that big area up there, and it's not even fair for the representatives. How are they going to cover all that area? That's just not fair. No one is going to get representative the way that is. And then as far as the legislative map, um, if you turn on the satellite, and you might remember me speaking in Glendale when you were there, if you turn on that satellite, you will see that the northern part of Maricopa County is all BLM land. There's no population. So when you have that little stretch from Carefree Highway up, you know, there's, there's just not a lot of population. And then you have a stretch all the way over past 124th Street, past Alma School. It's, there's no population. I mean, we are not rural. We want to be back to Scottsdale. Please send us back home. Please get us out of this experiment. We do not want to be rural anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now to Tucson. 
next five, the next five speakers, Linda Evans, Amanda Fisher, Darren Venters, Stephen Ware, Mickey Nimi. Linda Evans. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? My um, legislative map is indigo, if somebody wants to look at that. My name is Linda Evans. My legislative map username is indigo satisfies the requirements as follows. Complies with the Constitution, close to equal population, compact and contiguous regions, and respects my communities of interest, and uses geophysical features, river and mountain, city, county boundaries, and undivided census tracts. My legislative map, Indigo, importantly satisfies the requirements of voting minority groups for the Voters' Rights Act within the region of northern Pima County. My map goes north from the Rayito River, starting in the east at Houghton Road in the Tanka Verde region, northward up to the Catalina Mountains, then it sweeps to the west, including the Catalina foothills, up again to the Catalina Mountains, all north of the geographical river boundary, the Roito River. This map continues westward to Caso Adobe's region, where the Hispanic population has increased by three times in the last 10 years. Then continues west, including Marana to I-10 and sweeps to Oro Valley, which touches the Catalina Mountains and goes north past the Pima Pinal County line toward Florence, Pinal County, but not including Florence. This satisfies my low density communities of interest, maintaining pristine lands with other fellow residents who want the land to remain a place with wide open spaces, supported by organizations over the years, such as Friends of Sabino Canyon and the Catalina Development Association. We who now live in LD9 and LD10 have not had legislative representation in Phoenix for 10 years. Thank you for your time and kind consideration. Linda Evans. Good evening, my name is, is that okay? Good evening, my name is Amanda Fisher. I am a native Tucsonan and a retired teacher. I have lived in my current home, which is in Catalina Foothills for over 30, 30 years. I'm in Pima County Congressional District 2 and Legislative District 9. I see bobcats on my wall and javelina in the app in the early morning knocking over my trash can. In the spring, I enjoy road runners and quail families on my, on my daily walks through the streets of my neighborhood. I hike up a mountain north of me and I'm able to view the city below. I, am often, I often walk through the streets of my neighborhood. I shop and have my hair cut and, and have my nails done and lunch with my friends often in, in the Casas Adobe's Plaza. We go to breakfast on Sundays in one of the fabulous restaurants in the area with gorgeous mountain views. My Catalina Foothills community has many common factors that bring us together. The, the lovely mountains are our, our North Star. The last time the redistricting committee split my district by unlawfully forcing competitive districts and included part of the city. We are more of a rural community and have very, com very little in common with those that live in the city who truly have a different lifestyle. I want a district that really truly represents my interests. I am asking that the Arizona con Constitution be followed and that, in that it in is in compliance with the Section 2 of the Voting Rights. I am asking that there be contiguous regions in my com community of interest as well as the population be satisfied. 
We have more in common with those to the north and northwest of me, and even to those that are east to the Houghton Corridor. Specifically, I do not want to be included in the city of Tucson any longer. I believe this commission should give very serious thought to this community in, the, in that light and draw the maps accordingly. Thank you very much and thank you for your time. Darren Venters. Ray Durash or Durag. Nolan Reedhead. Shelly Karras. Kais Lana O'Brien. Joe Holden. Good evening, members of the committee. We really appreciate your time and the opportunity to address you. Uh, my name is Nolan Reedhead. I live in Aura Valley and have done so for over 23 years. And I want to speak about two issues primarily. Number one, uh, following all factors of the Arizona Constitution. And number two, my communities of interest. You as commissioners are well aware of the factors and the six criteria. You probably will have nightmares after all this is done as you probably recite them in your sleep. But however, we as sitting citizens hope you will strictly adhere to all factors. Last redistricting, the commission focused primarily on competitiveness, and you're hearing a lot of, a, a lot of talk about that. But please remember that co competition is only to be considered where there is no significant detriment to the other factors. Much about competition, it's not the prime important factor. It's not the all be all. In fact, it is the most, it's the least important factor of them all. Focusing too much on competition results in close to half of the district population being unrepresented, forgotten, and disenfranchised. Not just a small portion, but almost half of, the, of that district. Please make sure the districts are compact and continuous. Right now, I live in CD1 and LD11. I'm in, and I can drive through almost four to five districts through Phoenix to get to Flagstaff, which is also in CD1. I can drive seven to eight hours to Page and Fredonia rural communities that really have nothing in common with us here in Oro Valley. I can drive five to six hours to Cayenta in Tuba City, also in CD1, rural Native American communities with wonderful history and, and traditions, but little in common with us in, in Oro Valley. My communities of interest are Northwest Pima County, Oro Valley, Marana, Catalina, and Saddlebrook. I've lived in Oro Valley for almost 23 years. I've raised five children. All have gone to high schools, Ironwood Ridge High School and CDO. I specifically moved to these areas because of their academically inclined schools, their secure neighborhoods with strong police force and vibrant and business friendly atmosphere. The city of Tucson provides none of these for my family. Please do not include these communities and neighborhoods in Aura Valley, Saddlebrook, Moran and Catalina and Northwest Pima County in an LD or CD. The current, uh, the proposed CD5 that you have I think covers all of those community of interest and all of the factors of the Arizona Constitution. I would, however, encourage you, there's a small drop down on the east, southeast portion of, of the proposed uh, CD5. I would encourage you to raise that north and move it to include Marana. Marana and that area just west of the, of the freeway includes a lot of our communities of interest that are not included with that portion of the southeast portion of the, of the proposed CD1. So in closing the districts, the previous commission drew up were not compact, did not have equal population, were too focused on competition, and did, did not give the proper consideration to communities of interest. I do not want this to happen again, and I've seen you, I, I know you've heard that from many of, of the individuals here today. Please follow all factors of the Arizona Constitution when you're drawing the districts, and please only consider competition and what's fair, uh, and all of these factors as the last resort, making sure everything else is equal. Thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shelley Keis, and I'm the chairman of the Pima County Republican Party. 
My community of interest is Pima County. Because you see, when you opened this meeting tonight, you saw a sea of red behind you. And that sea of red of about 150 people was people who are saying, no, we will not live within these boundaries where our voices are not heard. And while you were so eloquently presenting our civics lesson, we were begin being given masks and told that we had to put these masks on. Here they are. But you see, when we came in tonight, there was a sign that we signed in that said, if you are fully vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask. The sign is gone now, but I have a photo of it. Our voice has been silenced in Pima County for 10 years. It cannot be silenced any longer. I'm not going to even begin to try and tell you how to draw the lines. You have the experts, you're collecting the information. I am just going to ask you to look at Pima County, the second largest county in the state of Arizona, the 44th largest county in the United States, and provide us with representation in Phoenix and in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Lana O'Brien. I live in Pima County, current Congressional District 2 and Legislative District 9. I'm here today to talk about the map boundary changes I made and why I made them, specifically in District 17. First, I want to note the mapping process for changes in the Arizona redistrict, redistricting program were cumbersome and time consuming, which is a problem because many individuals who wanted to provide a revised map didn't because they didn't have time to work with it. Despite the obstacles, I did a revised map. I spoke at the last public meeting and I'm here in front of you all again today. I've gone to all this time and trouble because it's important that District 17 be represented properly. Proper representation means that huge swaths of highly dense areas south of River Road are not included in District 17. Those areas south of River Road don't represent the diverse culture and communities that choose to live away from the city. I know this because I've lived in those unincorporated parts of the Northwest town most of my life. My parents moved first out to the Northwest side. There was a lot of desert all around us and a few housing developments with a bit of space around them. I believe back then as, as well as I do now that communities that live on the Northwest side connect and love the beautiful desert because we are all so close to it in one way or another. After I got out of the military, it didn't take much arm twisting to talk my husband into moving up to the northwest side of town. We bought a fixer upper near Pima Canyon with some land around it. We fixed it up, we raised our children there, and, but we've since moved on to another neighborhood, um, but we are still near our beloved Pima Canyon. When I see a fire down in Tucson, I think to myself, I hope everyone is okay. But last year when the fires raged in the Catalinas and in Pima Canyon, it was personal to us. The day our former neighborhood needed to be evacuated because of the fire, our family didn't hesitate to help our former neighbors because that's what communities do for each other. I hope I have impressed upon all of you how important and personal it is for me and others to ensure that we have proper representation this time around in redistricting. Specifically, District 17 boundaries should start at the Pinnell County line and go all the way west to I-10. And on the southern portion, boundaries should start at River Road 
and then move again down to Tanka Verde and then Alberta Houghton. Thank you for your time and consideration. The next five speakers, Joe Holden, Maria Hidalgo, Annie Ortiz, Catalina Hall, Judith Alkiri, Joe Holden, Maria Hidalgo, Annie Ortiz, Catalina Hall, Judith Alkari. Hello, Chairperson Newberg and members of the IRC Commission. My name is Maria Hidalgo, and I'm so happy to be a part of the Tucson community and currently live in what is known as the LD9 Congressional District 2. First of all, thank you for your time and your public service in this most important task. Recognizing that we're just starting the mapping process and that there is still so much to do. My intent in speaking to you today is really about three concerns that I have. One is the IRC's engagement of communities of color in this once in a decade process and the mapping software and the redistricting criteria. I cannot encourage you enough to continue to do everything that you can to ensure that these public meetings in the grid maps, but in particular in the next phase of the public comment for the draft maps, that you engage and make these meetings as accessible to the communities, especially with high Latino and Native American communities. With more than 30% of Arizona's population being Latino as a 2020 census, and two, that means two million Latino voters having venues inside these communities really will promote the importance of transparency and trust. Now, I consider myself savvy with technology. However, I'm self-conscious to share with you, no matter how hard I tried, but I've not given up. Um, using the software for the mapping was very complicated and overwhelming. As of today, I had been able to look at about 23 maps that have been submitted statewide. Think about that, just 23 maps statewide with about some of the mappers submitting as many as two or three maps. This appears to substantiate my concern about the software, okay? Anything that you can do, and I think some of the previous speakers have spoken to this, to increase the, pop, the participation in this mapping process will be very important, especially in those communities with notable populations of color that have um, either no access to the internet or not reliable access to the internet. Um, on the area of redistricting criteria, um, I ask that any map which which immediately does not come, come meet all of the six redistricting factors, and in particular competitiveness, should not be considered. Um, also, it would go a long way to foster, again, this issue of trust. If at all possible, you could let us know, as citizens of Arizona, what legal guidance you've been given as commissioners on how you can interpret these factors. Again, cho I'm choosing to be optimistic about this process, that we ensure that Arizona's electoral maps truly reflect what citizens in Arizona voted for 20 years ago, and it has worked. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, my name is Annie Ovitz. LD2 Green Valley, members of the Independent Redistricting Commission, thank you for being here today and for listening. The representation of whatever culture, ethnicity, and any other such group that needs separation from general, the general melting pot of the population will not happen in this new redistricting 
if you do not protect the people's voice that needs to be heard. You collectively, as the commissioners of this project, have the responsibility to align this map so it gives a voice to the people who are voting, and it is important all voices be heard. When it infringes on the rights of individuals because our representation has been skewed, we have the right to speak here today. We all have the basic understanding of cultural needs, and when it ceases to have merit, we have to speak up. We as a people choose to live in certain areas for many reasons, identified as family of origin, common interest, socioeconomic background, and other commonalities. Once our identity as a group of people or individuals become diluted into a melting pot of many cultures, it stops to serving the purpose and becomes a focus of a voting block or political gain for one political party. We all need to know we have a fair representation for all of us. It will benefit both parties and those independents if you make your decision not on the equation of population, but on identifying factors driving the needs of the voters and their constituents. Thank you for your consideration and thank you for your time. My name is Catalina Hall, and I live in unincorporated Pima County, an area called Picture Rocks. I am an Asian American Pacific Islander who has faced a lot of discrimination. I urge you to critically pay attention to communities of color, Latinx, and Native Americans. Draw district boundaries that reflect majority minority districts, communities of color, and the voting history. Balance party registrations to accurately reflect the current registration information. One-third Democrat, one-third Red, and one-third Independents. Let your commission be known and be remembered as the one that made every voter feel that their vote counted. Make districts fair and competitive. Make candidates compete for votes and really help to show that even across communities of interest, there are commonalities that we must never forget. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioner Newberg and members of the commission. I am Judy Alkire from Green Valley, Arizona. I'm here to suggest that the community of interest of Green Valley, which is a retirement community, uh, is very much like that of Sarita, our neighboring town, and the communities to the east side of Sarita, which would be Carina del Sol, Vale, and um, as well as, as you, if you would go south, this would even include Sierra Vista. We, uh, we like the semi-rural community that we're in. It is, we've lived in cities before, but now we enjoy the rural, less populated areas where traffic is less and opportunities for a life out of doors is great. One of the things that they suggested is how have I been affected by the last 10 years of the previous redistricting? One is I look today for the voting record of my representative in the United States Congress. And I have discovered that Ann Kirkpatrick has voted by proxy 222 times, followed closely by another congressional representative, Grijalva, Raul Grijalva, who has voted by proxy 221 times. They've missed many election, many votes. 
I am a tax-paying citizen of Pima County and the state of Arizona, and I do not believe that I have been totally represented for the last 10 years. I'd like you to keep this in mind. We, are, we now are included with part of the city of Tucson. Tucson is large enough to be its own congressional district or definitely its own legislative district. And then the people living in Tucson will be equally represented and we will not be diluted by the votes in the communities outside of the rural areas surrounding the city of Tucson. So with that in mind, I thank you for your service and look forward to the maps that are yet to be determined. Also, if I was in my community of interest of Green Valley and Sarita, I would not be wearing this mask. This mask was forced upon us by the rules and regulations of the city of Tucson. Thank you so much. We will now send it back to Scottsdale. Thank you, Michelle. Our next three speakers are Charmaine Roth, Mary Greer, and Tracy Martin. Hi, I'm Charmaine Roth, a new resident of Arizona. I moved here three years ago from Illinois. I live in Rio Verde Precinct in LD23. And I also am very happy with my legislative district and choose that it does not change. Um, the LD Democratic Chairman uh, forgot to mention the number of PNDs that are registered in our legislative district, what happens to equal independents and Democrats, I think, together. It's a little point she forgot to mention. And additionally, um, the Democrats are the mayor of Fountain Hills and um, Scottsdale, so kind of question the fact that the Democrats have been um, squeezed out. And additionally, in 2018, um, the Democrats lost by only three points. So I was not pleased with her numbers because I don't believe that they were uh, accurate. Secondly, um, my, our community is, as Alex said, is um, more in line, is it, the way it is now, it's in line professionally, economically, and with interest with the people in the community. Our community of interest is, that's where, you know, I live in Rio Verde, I go into Scottsdale, I go into Fountain Hills, that's where I go, and so I hope that it will stay the same. Um, let me see what else I wrote here. Oh, Alex made a very good point when he mentioned the way that he was dressed because, you know, attire does uh, indicate who you are and what, and that's fine because I think that's a good thing. Um, but he did mention that if he goes a certain place, the way he's dressed now, it'd look like a foreigner. If he went someplace else, he looked like, you know, he doesn't really belong. And we're really comfortable in our uh, community of interest. And the only suggestion I have when I looked at the map is the way it's designed. If there's a possibility to cut off the area from Thomas, Thomas goes across to cut that part out and put it someplace else, that would be great. But I love LD23, please don't change it. I'm happy here and I'm glad I'm in Arizona and not in Illinois. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the commission. My name is Mary Greer. I live in LD23 in the McCormick Ranch Precinct. Our democracy is in trouble, and I want to thank you for taking the time and the effort to do your part to make sure that you do what you can to preserve it. The purpose of representative democracy is to represent the people, not parties, not special interests. The creation of non-competitive districts serves parties and special interests, not the voters, with the possible exception of those who've historically been disenfranchised and who deserve special treatment. Non-competitive districts draw the most extreme and non-responsive candidates. This leads to polarization, tribalism, and political gridlock. We find that people are self-selecting uh, into little groups. They don't want to 
uh, associate with members of the other party. They're swiping left, so they won't date members of the other party. Um, they're claiming to be rural in character and that that is a community of interest because they don't want to be associated with the urbanites who have supposedly different interests. But I submit to you that as Americans, we have more in common than what divides us and that we ought to be focusing on promoting our common values and our common interests by creating competitive districts that do just that, that bring us together rather than polarizing us. In 2018, More in Common did a study that was published called um, Hidden Tribes. And what they found was that two thirds of the population, uh, which they described as the exhausted majority, is more flexible, they're fed up with division and politics, and they're less active in political discourse. And that one third of the population divides itself into the political left and the political right. And they're more active and they're noisier and they create a lot of, uh, a, a lot of press and a lot of activity. But that what the majority of Americans wanted going into the 2018 midterms, 87% felt the country was more divided than at any time in their lifetimes. 86% were exhausted by this political division. 89% wanted the parties to find compromise. 86% worried that this division would lead to violence. And it did. In, on July 6, we saw that violence erupt. <laughs> Jennifer Lynn McCoy of Georgia State did a, a, a study of 11 of the most polarized democracies around the world. And what they found was that they were characterized by the formation of in-groups and out-groups. You win, I lose. Each side begins to view the other as a threat uh, to their nature and to their country, to their way of life. Uh, this is a self-reinforcing process. And the more we segregate, the more that happens. The way to overcome that, they found, was to broaden voter participation, to encourage people to cross the divide, not to segregate, but to put them together and have them work through their differences. And you can do that by creating more competitive districts. Thank you for your time and for listening to these comments. Hello, my name's Tracy Martin and I live in the much talked about tonight community of Anthem. Uh, I moved here from another state and a small town within that state. We gathered at the town green and a local business handed out cookies and chocolate to the kids and the town band played and we turned on the lights for the Christmas tree, the parade for the 4th of July every summer. We ended it in the town green and everybody came and picnicked and visited in various Local businesses contributed miniature flags and little gifts and candy for the kids. And that's what I found in Anthem. This is a town. I know HOAs are a collection of houses and everybody has to paint it from the same colors on the list. But that's not Anthem. It's a town. Um, you can be on the same, your child can be on the same team with people that own one of the businesses there because the people that own those businesses actually live in our town. Their kids go to our schools. They belong to our churches. We see them when we're in the grocery store shopping. It's a real town. And it is very much connected to the neighboring communities in Desert Hills and in New River and Cave Creek and Carefree. We all kind of go together and our major interests do tend to move more to the south than up into Yavapai County. Um, we have in Anthem the fire the fire service, Daisy Mountain, and we also have a substation for Maricopa County Sheriffs. 
We love Daisy Mountain guys and we love our Maricopa Sheriff guys. And we are happy to have them both in our community in Anthem to help out at that north end of the county and the neighboring communities. If you've ever made the mistake of trying to get to the post office about the time the high school is going to start on the Anthem Way overpass, you will realize that on the east and west side of the freeway, it's all Anthem. All the children that live on this side are going to school over there. And all the children that live on that side are going to school over here, at least by the amount of traffic that is passing over Anthem Way at that time. So we really do belong together. Thank you. Our next speaker is John Patton. Lisa Greeman and Bruce Arlen. John's gone, okay. Lisa and then Bruce. Hi, my name is Lisa Greenman and I live in Cave Creek. And first of all, thank you for doing all this because we all know it's kind of like herding cats. So um, appreciate it. Um, I live in Cave Creek and I li live up by the Conservancy and one of the things that I would like to say is that when you live in, as everybody else has pointed out, Cave Creek and Carefree and Anthem, New River, that whole district, it, it relates down to the 101, it relates down, those, that's where we shop, that's where everything takes place. Why we're always tossed in with Fountain Hills is beyond me. I have no idea why the, it's, you know, it doesn't make any sense. And why we right now are up in Prescott is even more loony. I have no idea what that's all about as well. Also, in listening to some of these comments, I would like to say, isn't the whole reason that we have Prop 106 is not to be gerrymandering? I mean, if we're trying to prevent gerrymandering within the legislature, why the heck are we trying to do it with the whole friggin' state? I mean, you know, I think that we have to take into account our community interests for sure. And we have to take into account um, the geographics of the area as well. I mean, right now, if you're in Cave Creek, there's nothing north of us. I mean, you're not, it's, that's, it's to put us up in that congressional district makes no sense whatsoever. Um, it's, it's a totally, I mean, I don't, Payson doesn't make any sense for a congressional district. And as somebody else pointed out, who the heck is going to represent that? I mean, somebody, I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a crazy zone. So I bring that up. And I would also just like to say that, um, remember, don't split precincts, don't split towns. We understand that uh, counties get split, but precincts and towns are communities and they should be stay, stay together. Um, so, um, I think that's all that I want to say, except remember a community of interest is also that we are Americans first, Arizonans seconds, and we all have our town areas as well. And within that, of course, we all have different political points of view and we shouldn't be doing this to accommodate what is now in, in 2021, a political point of view because this is gonna last for 10 years and it's gonna build on the 10 years after that. So keep in mind communities first and all of us working as Americans first. Thank you so much for your time. I know you put a lot into this, so thank you. Good evening, my name is Bruce Arlen. You've heard a lot of people tonight. I hope you're, you're taking it all in. I'm sure it's being recorded and you are gonna, disseminate all of this information, but uh, I have some notes. I'm just going to wing it. Um, uh, the common theme that I hear tonight is people want to belong to their group. And I'm not talking about uh, skin color or even um, the political party, but their community. Uh, where they live, where they shop. So I live in Cave Creek. 
Uh, it's semi-rural, but we are abutted to Scottsdale and Carefree and Phoenix. We do everything in those areas. So I don't want to be part of Prescott, please. I don't want to be part of Fountain Hills. It's about 45 minutes away. Fountain Hills is a community that's like an isolated island. I only use that as an example. Uh, don't do that to me and to all of the people in Cave Creek. It's not fair. Um, ten years ago, we got here uh, nine years ago. So ten years ago when these new uh, districts were made, uh, I have no personal memory of it or history uh, that I can refer to, but it seems to me there were some mistakes made. Uh, a lot of far-flung districts, very big, very silly stuff that has to do, I believe, probably, uh, with politics, various lobbying that went on. It's probably still going on, and probably with you guys, I have a feeling. So resist that, please. All of these Crazy districts need to be corrected. We can correct it. You can correct it now. It's going to be hard, I think. It's a hard job. But if you do the right thing, uh, and again, I use the word resist, re resist the pressures that have to be upon you, your own political beliefs, the people who are calling you, the insiders, all those guys, resist them. And just think of the people. It's the people and other people tonight have mentioned that. Thank you very much. Our last two speakers, we have Tom Sanandandas and Christopher Brown. Hi. I'm Tom Sonendras. I uh, want to thank the commission for allowing uh, comments tonight and throughout your history and congratulate your endurance and also to the staff. Um, I have three ask. One, give back to, uh, speaking of legislative district one, give back to Yavapai County, what belongs to Yavapai County and move to and replace that uh, subtraction by moving us south where we have our geographic educational uh, school district uh, uh, economy <clears throat> uh, a community of interest. <clears throat> Number two, on competition in, 19, in 2020, in November elections, one out of nine congressional districts was competitive, measured by the winner won by 5% or less. Three of 30 congressional districts in terms of the race for Arizona Senate we're competitive, 10%. This commission can do better than that. My concern is what I've read in the media, which does not necessarily make it true, uh, is that up to three commissioners uh, are considering competition as a throwaway, something nice to have if the other five are met. And I think competition encourages candidates to appeal to a broader um, audience and um, it encourages honest debate, which we're very short of today. And I would like the assurance of the commission that they will uh, have uh, Moon Duchin, Duchin, who is one of your consultants, um, fully participate in the next uh, round of maps. She has developed this amazing software that spots gerrymandering, that spots um, competitiveness and meets the other criteria, but also um, plugs in um, competitiveness. And number three, for the MAP uh, consultant, we're all taxpayers, we're paying your salary. I think you should have an uh, email site that allows us to ask questions and get answers. This is not a real friendly mapping thing. I appreciate the changes you've made in response to competition, uh, to uh, comments, but I like to have a friendly place to go saying, I'm stuck. What do I do on this or that? And with that, again, thanks for the uh, good job you're doing. Well, 
standing clean up here. So thank you, everyone, you know, for the commission and for the people who have shown up here and in Tucson and across the state. This is what democracy looks like. This is us having our voices heard through um, a structured process, and I appreciate that. Um, my name's Chris Brown, and I've lived in Arizona for 42 years, in Scottsdale for 25, and I'm an ASU graduate, class of 86. Um, my background is customer loyalty research, so in being in research, I've dealt with numbers and sampling and things, and you guys have a very tough task, and I appreciate that. Um, I come today to talk about competitiveness, and competitive districts create accountable politicians. And to speak to that, I'm just going to go to a few numbers off of um, the elections in my congressional district, CD6, from 2018, 2016. Non-competitive districts are decided in the primary. The primary voters, you know, if we look at the percent in CD6, we've got, you know, 470,000 registered voters. 83,000 votes were cast in the Republican primary, which was an uncontested primary. And that candidate run, ran unopposed, that candidate then won. That 17% of the registered voters decided the candidate and decided the, um, uh, the winner in the primary. Same thing in, in uh, 2016. We had 25% uh, of the registered voters voted in the primary, 63,000 of those votes. 14% of the overall registered voters in that district decided who won that election. Those numbers speak for themselves. As I said, you know, um, competitive districts create accountable politicians who are, whose voices are heard. Now, accountability. So for me, this is an issue where I, I've ended up that my candidate has lost because of that. Um, uh, my congressman, Harry Mitchell, voted for the Affordable Care Act, a vote I supported, and many feel that he lost his next election due to that vote. Okay. So I still support competitiveness, even though a person that I supported paid the price because of a competitive district. So... That's what I had to say, and thank you all for your time. Thank you. Now back to Tucson. Our next speakers are Judith uh, Ho Hoagland, Steve Robinson, Matthew Levitt, Barbara Tellman, and Melissa Westbrook. Uh, my name is Steve Robinson, and uh, I want to thank you for giving me, a fairly new Arizona resident, the opportunity to speak with you. My wife and I moved to Oro Valley a little less than a year ago. Uh, we followed our daughter here, who's a grad student at the University of Arizona. And in that short time, we've been pleased to see, and we really enjoyed the diversity that defines Pima County and the commonality of interest among all the people in Pima County. At the same time, we've been disappointed to learn that the legislative district 
we're in does not really reflect that diversity. We've also learned that the districts around us are not drawn with any measure of party, race, ethnicity, or overall demo, excuse me, demographic balance. The result is that candidates running in one of these skewed districts need only cater to one group or one segment of the electorate. When a candidate espouses views that satisfy only one group, the result is that the winner is likely to embrace extreme positions in order to win the votes of that one portion of the electorate. It's interesting to me in listening and sitting through this whole meeting, uh, the community of interest, uh, I've read this a number of times in, 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 your, uh, in your charge to the people of Arizona. And I read that common social or economic interests, shared characteristics or experiences, similar issues or impacts of government policies or otherwise identify as a geographic area with a shared benefit from being kept undivided in a single district. I've read this a number of times over the last couple of hours. And I don't see any one of those that can't be invoked by any member of the community not only of Pima County, but in the state of Arizona. Like so many Americans, I'm alarmed at the polarization that has engulfed our political life. And I really fear the growing number of politicians who are comfortable espousing extreme views because they know they have the support of an unrealistically uniform district. The solution, it seems to me, is not to compartmentalize ourselves into, into groups that we are perhaps more comfortable with or that we think that we share experiences with. The solution is to encourage the candidacy of men and women whose views appeal to a broad range of voters in their district, not the extremists on, a, on either fringe, because the concerns and hopes of all different groups are shared. The way forward for Arizona is to give voters in that diverse middle a balanced opportunity to support candidates who share all their hopes and concerns. And I want to thank you for the difficult but essential work you're doing. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen of the Independent Redistricting Commission, I am here today to speak on behalf of Corona de Tucson and to reflect upon the new district grid maps provide for distribution to the general public. They are, in a word, atrocious and are a complete nullification of Arizona's many communities of interest. This is evidenced by the blending of diametrically opposed communities from proposed congressional districts 2 and 6 with legislative districts 7 and 19, Bisbee versus Tucson. Tuba City versus Sapford, Nogales versus Sierra Vista, Douglas versus Sells, Alpine versus San Simone, and Benson versus South Tucson, to name a few. The proposed districts completely destroy the voice of all those who choose not to live in the urban metroplex of Tucson and make it impossible for the people of southeastern Arizona to make decisions based upon their own lives rather than having to compromise with the wants and needs of millions who live within the concrete confines of one of America's largest cities. I think we can all agree that the current district proposals cannot be implemented in their current form. Thankfully, as we are all also aware, these grid maps are produced by computer algorithms based upon ineffective parameters. Computers will not take into account the vast differences in the communities they combine together, nor will they take into account the physical barriers dividing said communities such as interstate highways, military bases, electrical pylons, railroad yards, and vast stretches of forested mountains buffered by seas or chaparrales. They will not take into account the fact that my home in Corona de Tucson has far more in common with the communities of Benson and Sierra Vista than the communities of Nogales and Three Points. They will not take into account the fact that southeastern Arizona as a whole is tied with a rural suburban lifestyle that is based upon a rich history of mining, ranching, 
wilderness exploration, military installation, aerospace engineering, farming, vineyard production, law enforcement, religious settlement establishment, and retirement community founding thanks to our vast lands, fertile soils, moderate climate, and our hardworking and well-educated workforce who are spread out across five counties in a general area that is larger than many countries. Indeed, the computer algorithms are not representative of the needs and desires of we, the people of southeastern Arizona, for they lack the human factor that links all people as one. That, ladies and gentlemen of the Independent Redistricting Commission, is where you come in. For you are the lucky few who can and will take these many considerations into account so that Southeastern Arizona may once more have its voice heard. Thank you again for your time and consideration. I'm Barbara Tillman, a resident of Pima County and of LD3, a minority majority district, which to me is a real plus. I support Congressional District Map 0009, which is fair and similar to today's map, but avoids a major CD1 problem from last time. But today I'm going to restrict myself to comments about a map that I did for LD0006. I think I'm one of the very few people who managed to navigate successfully the mapping system, which is cumbersome at least. My map meets all the required criteria regarding equal population, minority majority districts, compactness, and contiguity. Its party distribution is very close to the 2020 presidential vote distribution, including districts that went heavily for one party or the other, and those with small margins of mixed victory that could have gone either way. It reflects the current registration statewide of one-third Democrat, one-third Republican, and one-third no party. These are my reasons for the way I drew six and why I support it. Major communities of interest. For example, this map keeps Saddlebrook, Laurel Valley, and Marana. Keeps Green Valley with Sarita. It keeps unincorporated communities such as Vail and Sun City intact. And it keeps related small communities such as Sholo with Pine Top and its associated tribal community of White River. That's not the case today. Tribes. This tri map keeps the tribes intact as far as possible and in the same district as nearby tribes. It has Navajo, Hopi, and two Apache tribes together, for example, and includes the associated commercial area between them. The Tono Odom Nation, including its major community cells, is kept primarily in the Tucson metropolitan area with which it is completely associated through its casinos and commercial activities. But today, its legislators reside in Yuma, a nearby town, because of the way the District 4 is written today to include parts of the Phoenix metro area. My map eliminates that. Compactness. This map splits counties as little as possible, and where they have to join with other counties, their section is kept in compact. I also deal with topography, transportation routes, and I think I'm one of the few people who has tried to take a statewide view and not just concentrate on a particular area of my concern. Thank you. Our next speakers are Nathan Davis, Bobby Hamarillo, Brian Bickle, Misty Atkins, and Allison Jones. Uh, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Nathan Davis. I'm a former Tucson teacher. Uh, I run a small business in the foothills and I'm a candidate for the Arizona House of Representatives. However, 
Today I'm speaking as a resident of the Casas Adobes neighborhood. When I spoke before the IRC last month, uh, I mentioned how interconnected this region is, um, that I uh, taught in Tucson, that I own a business in the foothills, um, that I um, associate with areas uh, all around northern Tucson, including the city, over and over into Tanca Verde. Uh, my community of interest includes the Casas Adobes neighborhood, Catalina foothills, and the northern portions of the city of Tucson. And I'm glad to see that many others told the IRC the same thing. Uh, today, I want to urge the members of the IRC to follow the Arizona Constitution as amended by Prop 106 and to weigh all six provisions equally. The spirit of the voter approved proposition is clear. The people of Arizona want free and fair competitive maps. Voters deserve a real choice when casting their ballots next November. I encourage the board uh, to take seriously the language in section F. Every section includes the phrase to the extent possible, um, all, you know, A, A through F. But only section F says should be favored. Competitive districts should be favored. Uh, I urge the IRC and board members to adhere to the spirit and the letter of the Constitution and create fair and competitive districts. But thank you for your time. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, committee members. My name is uh, Roberto Bobby Jaramillo, and I reside in the seven grid area, and I had for many, many years. And I speak on behalf of uh, a lot of working people that couldn't make it this evening due to the scheduling of four o'clock in the afternoon. It's rather hard for working individuals to make it here. Uh, what we want is, you know, inclusiveness in minority and Latino population as well as Native American communities and people of color communities and, and, and to be treated equitably. And I could, I'll relate a story to you where as we stand here at this meeting where the people of this community here, where we're sitting out, where this community center was built, didn't have equitable representation. And they were uprooted from their homes that had lived for generations and had to go live elsewhere. And that's why it's crucial that we have reputable uh, and equitable representation for all community members. I extend our offer to work with the commission all we want is a fair redistricting process and work jointly on the process of the solution. We don't want meaningful representation compromised and community interest sacrificed to the partisan goals of political parties. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Chair Newberg, members of the commission. Thank you for your service. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. My name is Brian Bickle. I'm a resident of unincorporated Pima County. I've submitted two maps, CD0009 and LD0011. The challenge in working with these maps is dealing with Arizona's increasingly urban population. Your team started at the population center and spiraled, out, spiraled outward in a clockwise direction. I started in the southeast corner of the state and spiraled inner, inward in a clockwise direction. This eliminates the district that runs from Utah to Mexico. My sole criteria were population equality and to a much lesser degree, majority minority districts focusing on the indigenous population. Our current maps provide a 5-4 congressional delegation, a state house that is 3129 and a state senate that is 1614. After I completed my maps, I ran them through the evaluator and came up with a congressional split that was four Republican, two Democrat, and three that were even. Three of the nine districts were majority-minority or majority-minority coalition, and there were five counties that were split. On the legislative side, there were two Republican districts, two Democratic districts, 12 that leaned Republican, 10 that leaned Democratic, and four that were even. 
11 of the 30 districts were majority minority or majority minority coalition districts, approximately the same as the congressional districts, both about a third. And both the congressional and legislative districts have a slight Republican lean, which reflects the R plus two status of the state as a whole. By doing nothing more than drawing the maps that reflect the shift in population from rural to urban, I created a set of maps that address all of the requirements of the Voting Rights Act and reflects the current makeup of both federal and state legislatures. Each majority party has solid wins. Districts they are going to have to work for and several they're going to have to bust their butts for. That ensures that, neither, that either party has the opportunity to have the majority in Congress, the State House, and the State Senate. To come up with any other distribution would require undue manipulation of boundaries to the benefit of one party over the other, which by definition is gerrymandering. I look forward to seeing your first set of draft maps. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Thanks for taking the time to piece together this complicated puzzle. My name is Misty Atkins. My husband and I moved to Oro Valley for the beautiful weather and abundance of year-round outdoor activities. I'm here today to state the importance of considering all the criteria. Take my LD11 district. It is neither compact nor competitive. It goes from Ina Road all the way up to Maricopa County. It's very difficult and nearly and prohibitively time-consuming for voters to get together and for candidates to canvas. The solution in my mind would be to split off the northern part of Pinal County and balance our numbers by incorporating more of Marana or more of the areas going east towards the Vino Canyon or even more of the south toward River Road. There are many options to make our future district more compact. The double whammy for us is that our district has so many voters from one party, the other party cannot win the very definition of gerrymandering. Our legislators have only to listen to the constituents from their own party. In our case, it has fostered extreme and one very extreme legislator who has kept his seat because there is no risk of being outvoted. There, aren't, there just aren't enough people in the other party. Our vote doesn't matter. When the idea of an independent redistricting commission was put before voters in 2000, the ballot title read, Proposition 106, proposing an amendment to create an independent commission to establish fair and competitive districts. The word competitive is right in the title put before the voters, and that is what the public wanted. For the commission not to work toward building competitive districts in as many parts of Arizona as possible would be a failure. And from the previous two maps, we see that it's very possible. I'm well aware that these first maps are only a starting point, but I'm asking you to equally consider all of the criteria when finalizing the maps. Thank you for your time. Thank you, members of the commission, for allowing me to speak tonight. My name is Allison Jones. I live in Tucson. I work here as a hydrogeologist on environmental and water supply issues. I've been appointed to the Community Water Advisory Committee for the City of Tucson and the County's Regional Wastewater Reclamation Advisory Committee. Thank you for the work you're doing. I ask you first to heed carefully the maps that, the maps that Barbara Tellman provided, LD006, that she presented just three speakers ago or so. Those maps do meet all the requirements. Um, and one thing I would like to see, com counties are communities of interest. And part of those, those um, divisions shown there try to not parse out a particularly LD over many counties. Right now, Pima has pieces of 14 to 11 and four. Um, second, we are a politically con uh, competitive state. I think a successful redistricting map will be one third Republican, one third Democrat, one third competitive. And in the competitive districts, 
may the best candidate win. What a concept. Finally, um, it's been proposed by some that this area north of the Rito River in Tucson be separated from the city. I completely disagree with that. In fact, that area north of the Rito River, those folks have Tucson mailing addresses. I think it would be a mistake to separate those folks. They come down the hill every day, down, down Campbell Boulevard, and they, they live and work in Tucson. One final thing I wanna make a point of is the, a community of interest that I represent is working people. I took vacation time to be here today, and not a lot of people can do that. If it's great if you're independently wealthy and not working and you can be here at three o'clock. But if you cannot, you have to wait till late or maybe not attend at all. I implore you to institute, institute a random um, speaker list by maybe giving out those tickets, number tickets like people do for door prizes. I think you would get a younger group of people here. You would get more working people here you would get a more representative group of speakers coming to you today. So in closing, Barbara Tillman's map, LD006, it's a winner. Thank you for listening to me today. Our next speakers are Michael Geddes, Wes Crew, Faith Ramon, Leslie Stalk, and Priya uh, Sunderation. My name is Michael Geddes from LD9 in Pima County. Thank you for helping to protect our democracy from gerrymandering. It's the only way to ensure fair American elections. I live in Tucson. I also work as a hydrologist, and a lot of that's because of the University of Arizona, a critical community of interest. Uh, it spawned this industry, and uh, I help sponsor student field trips so they can observe and, and engage with the rich and important mining industry in this state and try to train them to also become good environmental stewards. So if successful, these students, I mean, they'll go on to pay taxes above average compared to their peers, and that's a good thing because democracy is not cheap. So your job is really important and like Allison just said com counties are communities of interest counties have clearly developed into strong well administered communities of interest keep the ld lines on your map from crossing county lines wherever possible please counties have or share functioning school water and fire districts they have invested in development plans that already account for county lines if this is significantly undone by your maps it'll end up being significant significantly redone in the future at ta taxpayers expense so Arizona party registration, not a community of interest. Nonetheless, Arizona state party registration is roughly a third Democrats, a third Republicans, and a third other. If your commission is successful at the end of your process, you should create districts that reflect this data. Why? <clears throat> this is it. I mean, this is the core of democracy. The candidate who listens to voters wins. The candidate who connects with voters wins. The candidate who convinces voters wins. I want candidates to earn my vote. That's what this is all about. Would you really rather rely on ninjas to determine who's won? <laughs> Finally, some, some people favor rolling part of LD9 north of River Road and the foothills into a district with Marana and Oro Valley. This would not be compact. Tucsonans in the foothills are far closer to downtown than the Tucson population expansion areas of Marana and Oro Valley. So please, my asks. Keep LDs from crossing county lines wherever possible. Honor these de facto as Arizona communities of interest. Honor the percentage distribution of voter registration data when you create your LDs. Keep districts po politically competitive. Force candidates to convince voters to vote for them. And do not split the Catalina foothills off from the city of Tucson. I mean, seriously, will the motivation for doing that not be just a little too obvious? Good afternoon. My name is Wes Crew. I'm here representing the Arizona Center for Empowerment. More of us would be here, but this meeting was scheduled at 4 p.m. in the middle of a weekday and a school day, which working families and students cannot participate. As you heard earlier, as she mentioned, more young people and working families would be here if that was not the case. 
We know the grid maps that you've made don't include the Voter Rights Act considerations. However, we're disappointed that the mappers and consultants are weeks behind on delivering the racially polarized voting analysis. That data would not only help our community members, but would help you as commissioners understand how the Latino community could best be represented, yet nothing has been made public yet. The commissioner should demand the RPV report before considering these lines should be changed. Now, concerning the congressional district, grid district five also touches Pima County and connecting Pima County and Maricopa County will water down the representation of both of those counties. The district also includes rural Arizona. This does not serve any of these three communities well. It dilutes rural representation while also combining the two largest counties that should have separate representation from each other. The majority Latino communities in Yuma and Pima counties should be combined with the Latino communities in Santa Cruz County. These are Southern Arizona communities that often interact with each other. Residents of Santa Cruz and Yuma frequently come to Tucson to work, shop, or for recreational um, activities. Issues like health policy, transportation, economy, and border community representation affect these areas. Similarly, the configuration of grid six takes the communities of Santa Cruz and places them with different communities in Cochise County. This should be corrected and Santa Cruz should be removed completely from grid district six. Um, regarding district seven on grid district seven, southeastern Pima County should be the anchor for a district of Latino majorities. This district sh should include the Latino communities of Yuma and Santa Cruz County. Overall, Latinos are more than 30% of all of Arizona's population and their voting strength should not be watered down by these grid maps. There have been two majority minority Latino congressional districts in Arizona, and we need to keep it that way and make sure that those two continue to comply with the Voting Rights Act of 1965. The hub for one of the most, the hub for one of the congressional districts should be the Latino population in Phoenix, and the other one should remain the Latino population in Tucson. Lastly, I'd like to speak on, on agricultural areas. Agricultural areas in the southwest region of Pinal County are a natural addition to the Southern Arizona Latino Majority District. These areas fit well with the Tohono Nation as well as surrounded with the nation's Choo Choo Village. Lastly, as I know I am time, I ask when you do the plans for the next round of satellite locations or you're gonna do public hearings that you represent the tribal nations that were forgotten during the first round of canceled satellite locations. Thank you. Panchiki Faith Ramon, Abamja Akioto with them, Sisafdati Wasajidada. My name is Faith Ramon and welcome to my ancestral land. I was born and raised in Kiotoa in the Gaachi district on the Thanatham Nation. I reside in Congressional and Legislative District 3. I'm also a member of the Native American Church of Southern Arizona as a water protector. I preserve and carry the values of my Himadak and my faith. My geographic boundaries included the Thana Atom Nation, Santa Bear, and Pascua Yaqui Reservation, as well as Southside Tucson. As a community organizer with Lucha, I fight for equality, and how I do that is educating and empowering my community to vote. We have registered over 1 million Arizonans in 2020 to come out to vote. In particular, over the past 10 years, people of color have been growing including First Nations. First Nations have been oppressed by voting rights. In these spaces, our community is showing up and showing out. Folks are scared and are reshifting the power, taking away our community of color. You cannot continue to take away our power and our voice, which is protected in the Voting Rights Act and the commission must uphold these protections in the maps that are being drafted for the next 10 years of Arizona's electoral representation. 
the legislative grid maps deny Latinos effective representation on the southern border. Grid District 19 runs from the border through I-17, which is both a trade corridor between U.S. and Mexico, and also a corridor that connects my nation to Tucson, where many border residents come to shop, recreate, and socialize. That corridor should be part of the, the Latino majority districts, including agriculture areas in the southwest region of Pinal County as a natural addition to the Southern Arizona Latino majority districts. Those districts fit with the Thana Atam Nation as well as surrounding the nation's Choo Choo Village of Sithalak District. They also followed the agriculture band through Hillaband connecting the San, San Lucie Village and San Lucie District on Yuma, Maricopa County. Borders the rest of the Thana Atam Nation and it's connected the agriculture areas of Pinal County to the agricultural lands along the 1A corridor, including those of South Yuma countries. I ask that you do not separate us. We have passed segregation. My community of Tucson, my home, the Thana Atam Nation, my neighbors, the Pascoyaki tribe, as well as Southside Barrios, deserve minority majority fair districts. Equality, diversity is important to those of us who had to fight for our right in this country, for our land to be seen, to be recognized, and to be counted. Diversity equals representation. Sapo. Good afternoon, uh, well, evening now, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to comment um, and for sticking through this grueling process. Uh, my name is Priya Sundaration. I was born and raised in the Catalina Foothills area north of Tucson and have seen it change over the past almost four decades. Our lives in the foothills have always been intricately connected with the city of Tucson, as my parents and many of my friends worked at the university or the surrounding area and we visited restaurants and entertainment in the city. I now live near and teach at the university and I'm fortunate to have the flexibility so I could be here now uh, and, and earlier into when, as this uh, meeting started. Understanding that the grid maps will change, my comments are more general, although I hear that Barbara Tellman's map is pretty good, so I will lend my support to that. <laughs> um, there's nothing wrong, however, with in including city areas with suburban areas or rural for that matter if the constitutional criteria require it. It's also very important that minority communities are protected and given meaningful voting power as demanded by our federal voting rights laws. As we just heard, majority minority districts are an important way that such communities are protected. And this may have to come at the expense of perfectly even population counts, which is also fine. Change is inevitable and we must adapt to it. Our districts must change to reflect our city and state's growing population in a way that gives community members the opportunity to interact meaningfully with their elected officials. I echo others who asked for competitive maps for these reasons, so that our representatives do not hew to the extremes, but are incentivized to listen to all of their constituents to form a winning coalition of votes. Therefore, please draw districts that do not distort our suburban connections to the cities near us, that are competitive for meaningful access to representatives, and that protect the voting rights of our minority communities. Thank you. Madam Chair and Commissioners, we're going to take a five minute break.
Okay. Our next speakers, please, our next speakers that are going to be coming up, Kate Sounders, Joanne, Mara Keen, Alan Nichols, Anna Clark. Commissioners, can you hear me? You can. All right. Our next speakers are Kate Sounders, Joanne Marroquin, Alan Nichols, and Anna Clark.
Good evening, commissioners. My name is Kate Saunders. Some of you will remember me from the last hearing in Phoenix. Um, I recently finished my master's of science at ASU. I'm a deeply commended, committed member of my LGBTQ plus community. I'm an artist, a researcher, and an organizer. I currently work with Equality Arizona, the statewide LGBTQ advocacy group. And I'm here today to speak on the importance of recognizing and respecting LGBTQ plus community across the state in this redistricting process. And even though I live in Phoenix, I've compiled um, data around the Tucson area in order for you to officially recognize LGBTQ folks as a community of interest in this process, especially here where we're geographically connected in these hubs in, in Tucson. So a few things that are important to note about Tucson, it's home to the second largest public university in the state, the U of A, and in 2018, the Association of American Universities found that nearly 17% of college students across the country identify as LGBTQ+. In Tucson, in 2013, Susan Stryker established one of the first transgender studies initiatives in the country, and that's now within the LGBTQ, the LGBT, the Institute for LGBT Studies at the U of A. This is an educational hub which hosts a multitude of LGBTQ plus related groups and services. Um, Tucson is home to a significant amount of queer and trans art collectives and community spaces and resource centers and nonprofit organizations. It's home to groups like the Tucson Interfaith HIV and AIDS Network, Southern Arizona Senior Pride, PFLAG Tucson, and many more. I will say, I'm gonna, um, I have maps for you similar to what we produced for Phoenix, outlining um, it's data that we compiled using the LGBT, the Tucson LGBT Chamber of Commerce data on um, queer owned and allied businesses, historical sites, health clinics, um, parks where we hold our festivals, cultural hubs, art collectives and spaces for youth. Um, and it is still, we still have not been listed as an official community of interest um, through the redistricting committee and we suffer, there's so many reasons that I've spoken on before about why we are officially, like we should be counted as a community of interest. Um, it's also in Tucson specifically, it's where trans and queer people come together, not because we own horse property or not because we get our nails done, but because our lives depend on us coming together and seeking safety amongst one another. That's why we create businesses so that we can be included and feel safe because we suffer such grave degrees of discrimination. And so that's why places like Tucson, um, in the city of Tucson, and I, in the maps I'll describe where, especially along 4th Avenue, all the way down to Alvernon, Reed Park, and um, in, the, in like the 4th Avenue downtown area, especially close to the university. So what that looks like on the maps, um, Tucson's currently split in the congressional and legislative districts and the, we're split on CD2 and 3, and we're also split in LD3, 9, and 10. So pay attention to where LGBTQ plus community are concentrated and geographically connected in these downtown areas. As members of Arizona and Tucson, you have the opportunity to um, recognize and respect LGBTQ plus folks in this redistricting process. Keep us together, keep us in districts where we are values aligned, because we have a deep vested interest in voting with one another. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Joanna Madrakin, and I represent BIPOC and LGBTQIA community. I am a community advocate, a fellow social worker, uh, a daughter, a friend, a cousin that has known home for two generations here in Tucson, Arizona. I teach at a local a university, um, teaching social policy and community organizing. I live in District 10 and am active in District 10. I'm also part of the Tucson LGBT Chamber of Commerce, which resides in District 9. We, as the Chamber of Commerce, envision an economic and social equity for all of Southern Arizonans and have a diverse, inclusive uh, business, have been so since 1996. And we believe that inclusive business is good business. And if it weren't for this pandemic, we'd be celebrating Pride this Friday and Pride Festival and a Pride Parade this Friday and Saturday. 
but I'm not here today to talk about that. I am here to talk about our community though. I'm asking for your support in understanding that the redistributing of the districts certainly runs along congressional districts two and three and legislative districts three, nine, and 10. And, LG, and it deeply impacts us as an LGBTQIA community. Why? Because LGBTQIA plus individuals and businesses that serve them will are significantly impacted. We have built and cultivated areas of downtown Tucson up until all, all the way through Alvernon to protect and keep our community safe from interference and harm while providing supports to the LGBTQIA community through health and well being resources, businesses, inclusive businesses, events, culture, and arts, and have contributed to this economy here in Southern Arizona for many years. A recent poll by Gallup actually said that 5.6 of Americans identify as LGBTQIA and nearly 16% of them 24 years of age and younger will be eligible to, eligible to vote in the next election. So what does that mean? We know strategically redistrib redistributing is one of the things that will happen, but we know that when more votes are available to us, representation will happen and it matters. It matters because this is where our values are aligned. And I know that you're all working hard and I would love for you to consider us as a very specific community of special interest. We all know that we have various intersections and where we live, work and play. And the downtown community for LGBTQIA folks has always been a place to call home. And who doesn't want to have their needs met? Who doesn't want to have a quality of life to be increased? And taking away that and the opportunity to stay within our community promotes the notion that our community doesn't matter. And that, to I say, we will continue to be present and our verses will continue to be heard. I ask you today to consider that there are equitable ways to include the LGBTQIA community and it doesn't involve taking apart the current community as it exists. We ask you this to consider to protect and support LGBTQIA plus community here in Tucson. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good night. Yes, I produced a map, um, plan number LD004. If they could bring that up, please, and uh, focus in on District 16, 17, 18, and 20. Uh, my name is Alan Nichols. I'm here in Tucson, Arizona. We're here today to discuss the grid maps as generated by the IRC and redone by many people, including myself. This is a map I built. Um, uh, at the beginning of the presentation, I noticed that you displayed a community of interest map that was overlaid primarily about Southern Arizona. And it was focused around the Catalina Foothills area. That grid map in no way represents the area that the maps give us for a legislative district. The grid maps that are provided by the IRC divides the area against your guidelines. As I developed my map, I incorporated the IRC requirements like population, continuity, compactness. Additionally, I used natural and man-made boundaries like freeways and mountains to help define my districts all around the whole state. I also used information presented in previous rounds of testimony to try to make my legislative district conform to many of the communities of interest, like your grid map showed, around the state as well as taking into things like the Copper Corridor. While this process was not easy for me and it did take some time, I was very happy with the outcome. It passed all the IRC requirements and my new legislative LD district conforms to those requirements and to the Arizona Constitution. I would like to note that the grid map presented by the IRC did not always comply with their own requirements. In many cases, taking things and extending boundaries across freeways and thus separating communities. I understand that this is, that this is a complicated process, but I believe that it is possible to maintain areas of interest communities while balancing populations without resorting to divisions of precincts or making odd 
outlines into areas to achieve a sort of balance or outcome that might be required. I look forward to seeing your final output and moving forward to more uh, public input in the future. Thank you very much. Good evening, members of the commission. My name is Anna Clark. I live in Oro Valley. I'm in Legislative District 11, Congressional, congressional District Number One. Uh, I appreciate your time. We're going on hour four here, so it's I know it's been long, um, and I will be brief. Uh, looking at the grid maps, I was um, encouraged with Congressional District uh, Five and Legislative District 16. Um, I my communities of interest are Oro Valley, Marana, Saddlebrook, Saddlebrook Ranch, Catalina, and these uh, legislative and congressional districts encompass those with the exception of Marana. So we really need to keep Oro Valley and Marana together. Uh, they really are uh, one community. Uh, you know, I've appreciated a lot of the testimony we've had here, and we heard a lot about fair and competitive districts. That's something that I really agree with here in Pima County. In Pima County, we do not have fair and competitive districts as they stand now. Right now, we have three congressional districts that run through Pima County, all of which are held by one party. We have seven legislative districts that run through Pima County, half of which are, are 14 out of the 21 are represented by one party. So please, we do need, uh, we do need fair and competitive districts here in Pima County. Thank you. Our next speakers are Peggy Gibson, Linda Nelson, John Dalton, Tom Shambin, and Francis Bergen. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is John Dalton. I am the chairman for Legislative District 9 for the Republican Party. Uh, I'll keep it short and concise. I've been here for quite a while, so you've heard every argument under the sun so far. But uh, basic gist is, as of right now, I kind of support the uh, map uh, submitted by Indigo, which is LD0008. Again, LD0008. Uh, that's the map that I currently am liking so far. Of course, uh, we will expect some changes coming down the pike probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and just the last point, just keep in mind, which you guys probably already know, is that representatives are called representatives because they are supposed to represent the people in their communities and the people they are elected by. So thank you. Our next speakers are Kevin Oberg, Betty Harris, Stephen Valencia, Carol Schkolf, Aldita Fijera, Hi, uh, my name is Betty Harris, a Southern Arizona resident for over 50 years. I came here from Baltimore to attend graduate school, met my late husband, an Arizona native at the U of A, and taught at Pima College for over 30 years. We built our home outside the city limits where the land was cheaper at that time, and uh, I never left. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to add my two cents to this important discussion. Right now, I live in LD3 and in CD3. Uh, both of these are minority majority areas. 
I feel that it is very important to my neighbors and to myself for this to continue. Uh, I believe that the maps uh, mentioned earlier, LD006 and CD009, do that, particularly in regard to the Tohono O'odham Nation and also to other Native American nations. Um, I, uh, th this is all rather new to me, and um, I, that's about all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Here we are at long last. My name is uh, Steve Valencia. I, my name is Steve Valencia and I'm with the Coalition of Jobs with Justice. And uh, we've been functioning as a labor community coalition for over 30 years. And over those 30 years, we've been involved in many different campaigns for workers' rights. As a result, we know a lot of people and I think I speak for a lot of people here today and so uh, I wanted to share some points uh, with you today, but I may not get through my entire speech because it's on my phone and I've been here so long that I, it'll probably shut off on me. But let me add uh, just a few points. Latinos are now more than 30% of Arizona population and our voting strength must not be diluted. There has been two majority minority Latino congressional districts in Arizona and we need to make sure to keep those two in to comply with the Voting Rights Act. The hub for one of the congressional districts should be the Latino population in Phoenix and for the other one, the Latino population in Tucson. A Southern Arizona Hispanic majority district should be anchored in Tucson and Pima County. There are many Latino neighborhoods in Tucson that can be included in this district to protect the Latino majority voting strength. Many of these neighborhoods were part of a Southern Arizona Latino majority congressional district in the past. Hispanic communities in the border regions of Southern Yuma and Santa Cruz counties must be combined to complete the Pima County Centered Congressional District. Joining Hispanic communities in the borderlands of South Yuma County and Santa Cruz County with Hispanic majority neighbor, neighborhoods in Pima County will help ensure that Hispanic residents down by the border are able to elect a representative of their choice and ensure compliance of the Voting Rights Act. I offer those in, in all respect to the commission. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Carol Schloff. I live in unincorporated Tucson in the foothills of the Tucson Mountains. I lived there for seven years. And prior to that, for 10 years, I spent every winter and spring in Tucson. Okay. Tucson is surely a world-class city. I love the cultural diversity. I love its majestic mountains and the warmth and wonder of the desert. And of course, I love the food. I want to thank you for giving your time to this important process and listening to the diverse voices in our Tucson community. Today, I'd like to talk about communities of, int of interest and advocate for keeping the communities in unincorporated Tucson part of the Tucson grid. I live two miles outside of the Tucson city limits, and I am currently a part of Legislative District 3. My life is in Tucson. I shop there. I take advantage of cultural activities and it's where I spend my money. 
I know my representatives and they know me. My community can advocate for things that matter to us and we are physically close enough to our representatives to hold them accountable if we feel we aren't being heard. Now, just a couple of miles west of where I live, also in unincorporated Tucson, there's a community called Diamond Bell Ranch. They are part of Legislative District 4 in Pima County, but Legislative 4 is basically run out of Yuma. So they are 230 miles away. They're not a CD, They're, this is an LD. They're 230 miles away from their hub in Yuma, which is about a three and a half hour drive. Like me, they're invested in Tucson for their shopping, their cultural activities, and it's surely where they spend their money. When a community is sliced apart from where they call home, their voices are minimized and elected officials have no incentive to listen to them. Finally, another close neighbor is the Tohono O'odham Nation and its major community cells. This area needs to have their district boundaries kept in the Tucson metropolitan area. Their major com commercial and revenue produce producing areas, including their casinos, are located within the Tucson metropolitan area. When creating the draft maps, I urge you to approve maps that respect communities of interest, keep people together in their home community. It's where we belong. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Buenas tardes. My name is Adelita Grijalva. I am a third generation Arizonan, granddaughter of a Bracero, lifelong resident of Arizona, and I live in CD3, LD3, and unincorporated Pima County. As president of the Tucson Unified School District and Pima County Supervisor for District 5, I would like to welcome you to TUSD, even though it's virtual, TUSD and Pima County. I'm here to speak up for the legal need under the Voting Rights Act to protect both the Arizona Department Justice Department approved Hispanic voting rights districts and Latino representation for Southern Arizona. I last spoke to you on September 6th and appreciate the opportunity to speak to you again this evening um, as a representative of the Latino Coalition of Southern Arizona. It's a collective of Latino leaders, inclusive of community, neighborhood, business, grassroots leaders, and collectively we have decades of service to our community. We have joined together again and seek to engage the commission for the interest of Pima County and Southern Arizona's Latino communities. Our statewide coalition will be filing our proposed Voting Rights Act districts to aid, in the, commission, to aid the commission in drawing Voting Rights Act compliant congressional and legislative maps that reflect the broad Latinx community representative support in the very near future. Tonight, I will speak to the seventh grid map as presented, which is far from meeting the constitutionally protected goals of the Voting Rights Act and other as practicable changes in the Arizona uh, charges of the Arizona Independent Redistricting Commission. The most glaring issue is the removal of the Tucson Hispanic community from this district, as well as being significantly short of reaffirming our two VRA districts in Arizona that are currently recognized. Our coalition has worked hard across Arizona to move together um, to consensus in an equitable, uh, defendable and constitutional and also competitive grid map. Based on our census data, we now know that our Latino population supports anchoring one Voting Rights Act district in Maricopa and another in Tucson. Existing lines of Congressional District 7 in Pima County should be adjusted to include the majority and significant Latino populated neighborhoods north and south of East 22nd Street corridor as far east as Craycroft Road adding neighborhoods east of the I-10 north of Grant Road and south of Prince east of Campbell Avenue reflect previous neighborhoods included in past iterations from the 2002 Arizona Independent Redistricting Commission to meet the goals of the majority minority congressional districts. The district must include Pascuayaki, the Hono Otham Nations of Pima County, including San Luis District in Southwest Pinal County, as well as Old Pascua, the urban Yaqui neighborhoods 
um, predating the recognition of their tribal nation off of Grant Road and Santa Cruz County um, belongs with us and not Cochise. Our coalition looks forward to our continued engagement with the commission as we strive for equitable, legally defensible, and representative congressional and legislative maps. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Our next speakers are James Hanley, he's on here, Betts Hildalgo, Corey Magar, Gary Olson, Ron DeSouza. Which one of these works? Oh. Okay. My name is Betts Putnam Hidalgo. Um, I'm in Pima County and I live in LD3. I've lived here for more than 40 years. I'm embarrassed about how long I've lived here. I've owned a home for about 40 years here. My interest in redistricting is an interest in representation. That is the point. My community of um, um, my community of interest are all of the people in Arizona whose voices are not heard through our current districting process. And I urge you to keep those people in mind. It is supposed to be a representative democracy, and that means that all voices should be heard. And I don't believe that that's happening now, and I hope that it happens in the future. My specific communities of interest are the downtown area uh, here in Tucson, the university, uh, Tucson Mountains, South Tucson area, the land out to and including the Tohono O'odham lands. My community of interest doesn't look like me. Why would it? They don't shop where I shop. Why is that a community of interest? It's a community of interest, not a community of where we get our nails done. My community of interest, I repeat, are all of the people whose voices are not heard. The point has already been made that the Tohono O'odham lands should be kept intact and they should be a part of the Tucson area because that is what they want to feel represented. Gerrymandering has no place in a democracy and should have no place in Arizona. As I said, the point of representative democracy is representation for everyone. Many are excluded now, this must end. I ask you to support CD0009 and LD0006, both of which highlight fair representation for all. Thank you. And I hope next time you make these meetings far more accessible to working people. So um, first of all, thank you, commissioners, for being so generous with your time. I promise I'll be brief. So my name is Ron D'Souza. I'm the first vice chairman of the Legislative District 9 Republican Party. I just graduated from U of A this May, and I've lived in the Tucson area for 18 years now, with my communities of interest being Oro Valley, Marana, Catalina Foothills, and Casas Adobes. And I'm up here speaking to support I lend my full support to proposal LD0008 by Indigo, Melinda Evans here. Um, this particular proposal completely fulfills the criteria required of proposed districts, uh, including cont contiguity, con sorry, contiguity. It properly utilizes the Relito River as a southern border and uh, makes good use of the highways. We, uh, communities of interest, including Marana, Catalina Foothills, Oro Valley, and others are kept together. And as someone who grew up in Oro Valley, that's, that really means a lot to me because, you know, we, we competed with high schools that were based in Marana, based in Casas Adobes. Um, we, we did our shopping in Casas Adobes very often. Also, equal population to the extent practical. We see that there. Um, also very important, community of color um, 
proper representation for communities of color. One of my concerns with the committee's grid map proposal approved last Tuesday is that District 17 is being pushed too far south, dividing communities of color, including the Latino community in particular. Indigo's proposal would ensure minority, minority communities in the heart of Tucson and Casas Adobes are kept intact and maintain proper electoral representation. Foremost, I would suggest keeping Oro Valley and Miranda together. Both of our, I already said that, sorry. And I think it would be in their best interest to keep these two towns together just because of how interconnected they are. So please consider this proposal by Indico, which does justice to our communities. Thank you so much. The next speakers, Scott Oldendorf, Paul Stapleton Smith, Jesse Porter, Sabrina Nickerson, Justin Watsack, Annika Katrina Rodriguez, Good evening, gen uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Oldendorf uh, from the Precinct 187, LD9, and CD2. And my community of interest from my last testimony I gave to you a month ago is still um, the Northwest and North uh, Tucson up into Oro Valley and Catalina to the Pinal County or Pima Pinal uh, County line, but not not Tucson, south of the river. Um, there are no, uh, there was no advance notice from the RC to inform our LD9 citizens uh, of this uh, new hearing day uh, for testimonies after the RC maps were released on September 14. I only heard uh, through the grapevine of today's meeting. I really tried uh, to create my own map uh, for your viewing and going through the software checks to be approved uh, to be submitted uh, to you, but I failed. And only, uh, and I failed because there was a target district uh, lockout. Um, and only have my spoken words to visualize uh, what my map would have been. As I said, um, I am from LD9, which would be LD17, uh, but was placed. Um, due to my address into LD16. My LD17 map uh, would have the borders of the Relito uh, River to the south, the Catalina Highway to the east, the Interstate uh, Highway 10 to the west, and the uh, Pima Pinal County line with Saddlebrook and Oracle to the north. Uh, this is my community of interest. Your first draft of the IRC map uh, put me in LD16, which cut me off uh, from my Tucson Foothills community uh, to the south and unrealistically stretched the LD16 north all the way to Casa Grande and Superior just south of Phoenix. My community of interest is not Tucson south of the Relito River and is not north across the desert uh, to Casa Grande, Santan Valley, and Superior, just south of Phoenix. Let me live and prosper in my own uh, community of LD17. The grid lines uh, for the last 10 years have favored the Democrats and divided the Republican population, allowing the Democrats to dominate the elections. You have seen uh, what they have done. Uh, that, uh, that is not my community. It needs to, to be compact, connected, contiguous, and in line with our Constitution and voting right laws. Uh, do the right thing for our future uh, is all based on your decisions. Let's make uh, Arizona great again. Thank you for your time. Uh, to the commissioners and to everybody who's in attendance. Thank you for your uh, amazing endurance uh, here. My name is Paul Stapleton Smith, uh, Tucson, Arizona. 
born and raised, father, grandfather, working person. And uh, I do an awful lot of work with uh, career and technical education. We have a phenomenal JTED program. And I want to underscore, as an example, and I want to underscore what uh, Brother Mike Wilson and Faith and uh, Barbara Tellman regarding MAP LD0006 and the Tuano Adam Nation. It's imperative that we have an inclusion there that's meaningful for our economy, for our educational system, um, and for the reasons that you've already heard today. Um, and in addition, on the competitive aspect, it's also imperative that we maintain true competitive districts. I know you've heard that, and, and I'm compelled to stand here and say once again uh, that, that those competitive districts are enormously meaningful to us and to all that we aspire to. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, you, you must know that we appreciate and admire all of the effort that you're putting into this, and again, your stamina. So thank you. Good evening. My name is Janice Porter. I've lived in Arizona since 1994 and in Tucson since 2007. I chose to live in Arizona because of its diversity. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I believe that with rights come responsibilities and in order to preserve and promote democracy, I take seriously my responsibility to participate in the democratic process. The right to vote and the right to have competitive districts within the state is one of the reasons that I voted yes on Proposition 106 to establish the Independent Redistricting Commission in Arizona in 2000. Arizona is a competitive state with one-third independents, one-third Republicans, and one-third Democrats registered. Extremism thrives in non-competitive districts and has sent to the legislature, legislature some of the most incalcitrant and immoderate politicians. Competitive districts foster a climate of debate and compromise, both necessary to a functioning democracy. Democracy requires that more people vote, not fewer, and competitive districts encourage that. When creating the draft maps, please make your best effort to balance the party registrations in each district to accurately reflect the current registration information. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Good evening to all of you today. Uh, my name is Sandy Ochoa. I am with Mi Familia Vota. According to the Arizona IRC website, Arizona must demonstrate that the new districts do not discriminate against minorities, minority voters, and purpose or effect, which means there can be no intentional or accidental discrimination. Under Section 5, Arizona's redistricting plans cannot be retrogressive. The plans cannot weaken or reduce minority voters' rights. The presence, the presence of discrimination can be determined by analyzing population data and election results. Latinos are now more than 30% of Arizona's population and our voting strength must not be diluted. A Southern Arizona Hispanic majority district should be anchored in Tucson and Pima County. There are more Latina neighborhoods in Tucson that can be included in this district to protect the Latino majority voting strength. Many of these neighborhoods were part of Southern Arizona Latino majority congressional district in the past. We need to keep the two congressional districts with the highest Latino population in Arizona. For this, I ask that you all take into consideration that hard workers, families that cannot be here should be here. And we ask that the timing of the meetings be considered very highly so that everybody can participate in all this. Thank you.
Barbara Kane, Tom Kurlowski, Kimberly Finch, Amelia Eldridge, Livy Hurley, Eva Carrillo, Doug, Good evening. My name is Kimberly Fitch, and I have lived in Tucson and Pima County for almost 40 years. I live in Congressional District 2 and Legislative District 9. I own a property management company in Tucson that employs almost 90 employees with almost 4,000 apartment units in Tucson, Casa Grande, and Sierra Vista. Establishing competitive districts is part of the criteria established by Proposition 106. The current political environment is extremely divided and keeping the voting districts competitive is important. Elected official, electing officials who are moderate in their political persuasion will allow better cooperation to ensure the government works for all people, not just those in the winning party. Establishing districts based upon political party would eliminate the competitiveness of, of Arizona's political climate. It would be like removing a, a competitive football team from the league simply just because you can't beat them. That's not the way to win, nor is it a way to run our elections. My goal tonight is to request you to keep the boundaries so that no individual has to drive an undue fair distance to vote or to meet with their representatives, to keep our districts competitive and to work to ensure that every vote counts. Please balance party registrations to reflect the current registration information. Thank you for taking this very, very important role, and I trust and support the voting rights of all the individuals per the U.S. Constitution. Thank you. Well, uh, my name is Tom Przelski. I, I used to be, I was a, uh, I used to be a member of the Arizona State Legislature. I represented uh, this district in, in the House of Representatives. Um, and clearly that was a long time ago because nobody knows how to pronounce my name anymore. Um, I'm here to argue uh, something that, that's been already been talked about, and that's the need to preserve representation for the Mexican American community. Uh, but I, I want some, uh, I want the commission to consider that there are things that aren't necessarily reflected in statistics in the, in the number crunching. For instance, people have already cited that the Tohono O'odham Nation, for example, has had very long standing political and economic ties with Tucson. And that goes back decades, if not longer. And so uh, it's important to keep the, 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 the nation with Tucson. But if you look at some of the, um, especially on the legislative map, we're dividing historically connected Mexican-American neighborhoods. Despite what a previous speaker said, a freeway is not a natural boundary. The freeways were not always there. And some of those neighborhoods were divided by the freeways and the people still maintain those ties across the freeways, uh, and particularly uh, in the boundary that we see between uh, 18 and 20 uh, north of South Tucson. Uh, conversely, when we talk about some of the, the other communities outside of Tucson that are majority Latino communities like, uh, like Nogales, uh, Douglas and, and Bisbee to a lesser extent, those families have ties in Tucson. And these are very old ties. These are, uh, 
you know, we, we talk about the Mexican American community being both very new because there's an immigrant, there's constantly a new immigrant population, but it's also very old, uh, you know, families that have been here for generations, uh, like, you know, as, as, uh, as Supervisor Grijalva mentioned, uh, you know her her father, her grandfather, like my grandfather, was a, was a vaquero, and uh, our families have been here for a very long time. So I just ask the commission to consider these things, to do a little more consulting with the both the tribal nations, and with the Mexican American community. Consult some of those uh, some of those uh, proposals that have been coming out of uh, some of the community groups. And just think about these communities uh, before you start dividing them uh, and, and consider history, consider uh, old family ties, consider old political ties uh, before one starts chopping things up because potentially you're diluting political power. And that is certainly inconsistent with not only the Voting Rights Act, but also the language that has enabled this this commission. So uh, keep those things in mind. Uh, thank you. Good evening, my name is LaVoy Hurley. I live on the east side of uh, Tucson in the unincorporated Tanker Verde Valley area. I know I'm not quite the last person, but uh, it's getting late. I'll cut to the chase. Contrary to what some of the folks here have said, people like me on that, those outskirts areas, we don't have any, I have nothing in common with the U of A neighborhoods that are currently part of my legislative district 10. I go to Tucson, because I don't have any choice for shopping in most of my restaurants and things like that. But I don't see the people from the west side in Tucson coming out to my area. If our areas were truly linked, that would be a two-way street. It's not. And that gets up to my second point that I've heard other people talk about here on both sides of the aisle. Tucson needs its own district, both its LD and move and incorporate the entire body. And I'm talking about the central part of Tucson, not the outlying areas which have been incorporated or, or annexed uh, over the years. The central part of Tucson is, in fact, a community. It needs representation. It doesn't have it. The current maps, the grid maps, frankly, you know, my opinion, the grid maps, they kind of suck because they don't do anything. They don't incorporate anything except the population uh, equal numbers. It, but it cuts up Tucson. Stop dividing Tucson. All right? It doesn't make any sense. And if you start, frankly, with that central part, that Tucson as a community of interest, then the outlying areas in those suburban areas, they will naturally fall out, much as, if, as we've been talking about with the communities out of the external areas. So I'll leave you with that. Stop cutting up Tucson and go from there. Thank you. As Ms. Carrillo is making her way up here, next five speakers and the final five speakers, George Leva, Sabrina, Serena Leonard, Kay Davis, Nichols Lockwood, David Herrero. Hi, thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Eva Carrillo Dorn. My family has lived here all of our lives as my grandmother was born here in 1908 before we even became a state. I am the chair of Legislative District 3, and I would like to talk to you about the grid map number seven. I realize that statewide coalitions will be filing a proposed Voting Rights Act districts 
to aid the commissions in drawing voting right acts compliant congressional and legislative district maps that reflect more broad Latino community representative support in the near future. However, here I want to speak to the seventh grid as presented because I feel it is far from meeting the constitutionally protected goals of the Voting Rights Act and other charges of the Arizona Independent Redistricting Commission. The most glaring result is the removal of the Tucson Hispanic community from this district, as well as being significantly short of reaffirming two VRA districts in Arizona as currently recognized. I feel that adjustments can be made to correct these current deficiencies while meeting other goals of the commission. At the last Arizona IRC public hearing meeting here in Tucson, the Southern Arizona representatives of the statewide Hispanic coalition spoke of providing a voice here in Pima County and Southern Arizona's borderland regions to be represented by someone of their own choice. Now that the census numbers have been released, we know that Pima County on its own has enough minority Latino residents to ensure the second VRA district population majority, as well as Latinos being the majority population in the Pima County portion of this district. As a member of the Sunnyside Unified School District Governing Board, I personally ask that you keep us whole. We are a very diverse majority minority community. As a matter of fact, existing Tucson and Pima County neighborhoods within the current CD boundaries reflect historic Latino neighborhoods and their connections to each other for decades and has been reflected in past congressional and legislative districts. Tucson City Council Wards 1 and 2 as majority minority Latino wards should remain whole and see in the census significant minority and Latino neighborhoods of Ward 3 help make up the majority Latino portion of the Pima County's portion of the second majority minority Latino VRA compliant district. The University of Arizona is surrounded by neighborhoods including ones with significant minority Latino populations with historic connections to the university and to each other, with the university being the magnet that brings them all together. Tucson and Pima County are home to the Tohon Atam and Yaqui nations and their people are an integral part of our region's identity. They've always been an important part throughout my childhood. And they must remain whole as nations and in our Southern Arizona borderlands, region's majority minority Latino district. It is not just and is disrespectful that they not be included as a voice in their own neighborhoods. I just ask that the commission to work fairly to define and refine the lines for reestablishing the second voting right act as we move forward. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kay Davis. I live in the city of Tucson on the southwest side. And since moving here, I've learned much about the tribal communities of our state. Current district boundaries have the Tahana Otham Nation in several districts. They do not respect the community of interest of the Tahana Otham Nation. I urge you to consider MAP LD0009. The Tahana Otham Nation needs to be primarily in a district associated with the Tucson metro area and Pima County. Map LD009 is a fair and competitive map and will ensure the voice of our Native American community is heard. I've also submitted my comments online. Thanks for listening and your commitment to redrawing congressional and legislative districts to ensure that districts are fair and competitive compact and respect district boundaries. Thanks so much. Thank you, commissioners. I'm here 
representing LD9, but that's not what I want to discuss. I want to discuss the proposed boundaries of CD5. CD5 is a land grab, taking away historically Tucson neighborhoods of the foothills and combining them with Pinal County, Southern Phoenix. This is 50,000 people that have their whole lives been a part of the Tucson community. Now, I've heard earlier today that, that we're not a part of it, but that, how can that be? For 60 years, the second house in my neighborhood, that's where my family's from. We've gone to the U of A. We've worked at Raytheon. We are Tucson, just like Tucson is the foothills. It's a symbiotic relationship that you cannot take away. It would be an egregious error to all of us in the foothills. Thank you. Commissioners and listening audience, our last speaker is David Herrera. Commissioners, thank you for your uh, dedication to this process. I know that tonight is only one of many long meetings for you, uh, but uh, thank you for the hard work you're doing and, and will do. My name is David Higuera. Uh, I'm a resident of Tucson. In fact, I live walking distance from here. Um, and my community of interest is every child growing up in our state who needs good public policy that particularly takes into account the fact that we need to grow sustainably for decades to come. Uh, if we want a state for our children to actually be able to prosper in. And to get at that, I think the number one criteria you should be focused on is competitiveness. When elected officials have to find common ground, when they have to appeal to people on both sides of the political aisle, um, they are much more likely to, to come to the table and give a little, to get a little, and compromise and collaborate and come up with work workable solutions that can actually help us tackle huge issues like how are we gonna adapt to climate change in our state. So I think competitiveness is the number one thing. I wanna say on the issue of the Voting Rights Act, I've heard many speakers this year and 10 years ago say, you know, make sure you abide by the Voting Rights Act. And I agree to a point. I don't think it serves anybody to ghettoize communities of color. If it's a 65% district, making it a 68% district, does not do anything in terms of the folks' ability to elect somebody who, who has a similar background. But it does mean that other representatives in nearby districts don't le need to listen to that community. So I think we need to be really careful about abiding by the Voting Rights Act, but not ghettoizing communities of color so that more representatives also feel the need to listen to all members of the community, including communities of color within their districts. Thank you. Pro Tem Chair and members of the Commission and listening audience, that concludes our speakers at the Tucson location. Okay, um, it looks like we're at the end here and everybody here in Scottsdale is cleared out, but um, I appreciate everybody that's sticking in there in our Tucson location. And so uh, we will Yes, thank you for, for hanging in there. We, we appreciate it. But rather than relying purely on the interpretation of the comments today, we encourage you to go online and submit a map to us using our mapping software. You know, we did hear of uh, the complications, but we're working hard to make it as easy as possible. So look at our mapping process at irc.az.gov. Uh, this will ensure that we correctly understand your definition of your community. Please encourage your friends and neighbors to share your thoughts as well. Uh, anyone can do this online as we've been uh, discussing and we encourage again. Uh, continue to uh, log in. We will be continuing these meetings and we hope to hear from everybody. So with that, we want to say thank you for everybody participating, our staff, legal counsel, and so we will call this meeting adjourned. Safe travels, everybody, and have a great evening. Good night.